Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, episode number 189. I'm oh, Dave. No, 189? 189. Nope. Oh, who are special. you? I tie right into I the don't game. Give a shit. I bowled right over you. <laughs> well, here's the deal. I've been trying to I've been trying to sound more professional because I've been working with other shows because I've been doing new horror movies and Jay of the Dead is always professional with his stuff and his intros and outros and stuff. And then I just did the banana laser. And Matt, the, the amazing thing about Matt, guy doesn't record for three years, tells me he's nervous before we start doing the thing, gets on, and at the end of it, I, tell, I go, dude, you just let a conversation, what, what you just did these last two, two and a half hours, I couldn't do on my best day. So don't be nervous, because he's so he, damn good at it. That's, But sometimes that's the what you need. Sometimes that absence is what just drives the show. I mean, you've even told me, and we haven't done a TGIF 13 for over a year. It's been a year and change. Holy shit. shit. Uh, wow. But the reality is, and for four shows left, that's all we wanted to do. It's just been a kind of a, uh, it's, you know, I blame Vince. It's Vince's fault. But you yeah, said, when we had an absence <laughs> and we've come back, you've said those are sometimes the best shows because we come out guns a blazing. And it's like, you you could tell we haven't seen each other for a bit. And it's all this energy and whatever. And I, I would agree with that. I would definitely agree. So we'll yeah. see if that actually happens, if and when we ever record this next next episode for that. But well, no, Matt's awesome, and Matt's got that voice, right? Yeah. But, uh, no, it's cool. I'm glad you're you're able to 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 work on these other shows. Admittedly, I said I was going to listen. I haven't listened, not because hey, I haven't buddy. wanted to. It's just been kind of a couple of crazy weeks. I mean, I should listen to any podcast as of late. Nothing, of late. huh? In well, the last in the last week and change, yeah. There's not a lot I'm listening to. I think I talked about it last show. There's only so yeah. much I, I, I could tolerate at this point. And I, I try new <laughs> ones. And I know it sounds bad, but I, I just, I listen. And it, even even the other stuff, I, I just, after all these years of, of constant podcast listening, I think I've just, and I don't think it's me burning myself out. I just think so many things have been exhausted. So many topics and, and other things have just been exhausted. And everything is just kind of, kind of the same now and i don't and i don't see a lot of host bringing it like there are certain shows that'll always bring it like to me if a skeleton crew without me i'm saying just is anything alex does i'm gonna listen to or, or jamie yes that goes without saying i'm good and I, it never disappoints uh you know if 22 shots they always bring it certain shows to me no matter what they always bring it but other shows it just seems like I don't know. I, I can't really. Well, it's the I'm not entertained the enough. It, it's that's what it boils down to. The topic. The topic is sometimes like the bait to get people in. Usually new listeners. The your 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 the people that like are in the, the group that we all sort of get along with. They're gonna listen. I'm not saying we can't piss them off every now and then. I know. I, I don't know. We've all pissed someone off one way or the other. Sure. Uh, based on our opinions or based on our our stance on whatever, based on our obnoxiousness, whatever it may be. But the camaraderie of the host is what keeps you coming back. So that's what keeps us listening. And I would assume is what keeps people listening to us, whether it be through Patreon, whether it be just old school feed, what whatever. Um, either is good, or they've jumped ship because they've gotten tired of us. I mean, we'd maybe. like to think that we we keep the we keep it coming and we we deliver every episode. But maybe for some, we're like, nope, these guys are poor. Like that one guy that tapped out on what was the the Purge franchise out of all yeah. the ones that he tapped out on. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. I'm out. <laughs> it must have been Purge. a political uh, motivational something. I'm, I'm guessing. And then oh, and speaking knows? of that, Probably. and not even politics, but just this check, is what check. I've noticed: things. I'm cool. Things that happen on the feeds, things that happen on, on Facebook and social media, things that are happening there seem to spill into the podcast now. So the podcast hosts, and I think that's become part of the problem. In the beginning, when people did podcasts, they just did podcasts. Maybe they had a yeah. news thing and they go, oh, did you see this is happening in horror now, this and that. But now it's like everything is just – and it's the same stances. And it, every, it just seems to be like – here's the worst part. When something is not liked, you just oh you can't get enough of people shitting on it. Either hello Halloween ends, like uh -huh. our feeds have been exploding. Trash fire, know. shit fest, garbage. It can't be worse than Halloween kills. It can't be worse than Halloween kills. Can it? Or resurrection like that type of shit. Or no, I'm talking about you know, that crap. <laughs> now everybody's like, yeah, this is the worst. Resurrection's a fucking classic. These people are fucking nuts. I'm, I'm like, straight up, straight agreed. up. Nuts. I'm not saying you can't dislike a movie. I can't say you can't can't dislike a movie. 
I, it's very difficult for me to see any argument. <laughs> I, and I, I know that Brandon even tried to argue it. And I even think, if I'm not mistaken, JB tried to argue that resurrection's not as bad as we make it out to be. I don't know about but Jamie. I'm, I'm here to tell you, Brandon. it is, it is, it is. <laughs> it, it's awful. It, it, it's horrible. And, and yeah. the only redeeming factor to me is possibly that opening five, 10 minute Agreed. segment. And even, even that is, is, is some weird stuff in there. Like Michael yeah. headbutting through the door, the, 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 you know, everybody gets mad about uh, Jamie Lee setting traps in this new one. And she sets this fucking <laughs> Gizmo up on the top of the mental health facility with a rope and all this shit. <laughs> it's it's right? crazy. And we're going to get into it. I don't mean to go uh. right into Halloween right now, uh, but I get it. It's like you can't, people can't hate a movie, but then it's like everybody that loves a movie. It's like, it's crazy. Like everything, like we've talked about on the show, it's like polarized. Like I, I stand on the side and there can't be any discussion, it seems, anymore. I'm not saying for everybody, because some people are like, are commenting on this and saying, what the hell's going on? It's a fucking movie. Now we're talking passionately because that's what this show's about. If you're not if you're not talking passionately about it, why are we doing this? So there's gonna be passion See? behind our, our discussion, but that's exactly it. Like now, like I'm reading some of these comments and going, it's just a movie. Yeah, well, if you're just on a feed and you and you just watch movies and you don't really discuss them, then I can understand that. Like, why are people getting up in arms about it? It's not about getting up in arms, but it's about having a discussion. And if there's no passion behind it, then what's the point of having the discussion? But I don't care if someone hated a film, I don't care if someone liked it, but give some valid reasons. And I have no problem with people disliking Halloween ends. I can see my wife did not like it. I understand. My wife did not like it. There you go. It's different. It's definitely different. So I understand people. That if someone says they don't like it and they give the certain valid reasons for it, I get that. That's fine, especially if you have expectations yeah. and and I, I get it. Me personally, I had another stance on it, and after watching it the second time, I've 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 taken more out. I've actually can look at the whole franchise, not the whole franchise, but the whole the new trilogy as something different, where each movie had a different theme in it. I got a whole yeah. freaking thing ready to go. I'm telling you, I could talk about this. I, could, I never thought it, it would happen, but I can quote unquote wax intellectual about freaking Halloween ends and some of the other stuff in, in the franchise. And whoever would have thought that, like, here's the funny thing. When I recorded a uh, banana laser, we just, we just we did, well by the time this comes out the second one will have will have been heard but we recorded the Halloween Kills episode like a, a week and a half ago or something and they said well what do you guys want from the last one and I said why can't we just have it this it's four years later I said so now all that stuff's not going to be there anymore all the townsfolk and everything it's not going it, we can make a different type of movie where we can take it back to seventy eight where everything's calm right and he's just going to go back to killing babysitters teenagers and then at the end write it the right way. Where there is, a, you know, a showdown between, between, you know, Laurie Strode and him, and you know, she takes him out or whatever. That would be so simple, and that would be great. Now, we did not get that at all. And the funny thing is, I am glad that we didn't. I'm actually more pleased with what we got because it was such a left turn that. But to me, I I, I figured it out. It it was so quiet compared to the other two movies. It was like we're gonna get we are gonna get into this then because I can't I can't have you say that and then not interject because I I'm again the passion. And so I see can't be helped now. I do not think it was great, but I liked it. I thought it was good. I thought it was good and I liked it. So I'm not taking this extreme, and it's not because I can't take it extreme, because I've done that in the past before. Toxic Avenger, I I I've raved about. And hey. you know what? On my top one hundred list, I think I I you know, I, I I ranked it a little bit more. Um I changed my ranking a bit. Well, we introduced more movies uh because we went later into uh when we were doing the uh top twenty movie top our top twenty favorite movies of all time. Oh, right. Or right. Whatever. I'm not trying to jump topics here, but I mean we will no, talk no. sometimes because of passion once again. But this movie, I liked it. And possibly, possibly social media helped me enjoy it because when people were coming up with their initial when I was still at that work function and hearing all the trash talk about it from the initial thoughts of the Thursday night screenings. Or or whatever it may be, and people had already seen it. I'm like, what the fuck? So I think something kind of maybe anchored me, if you will, from going mm-hmm. reserving expectations. I always try to keep my expectations in check. I can't help it. 
I'm a yeah. horror fan. So like when I go to see a new, especially a franchise movie that I grew up with, I'm 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 like ah, I, I I can't wait. I can't. So I think right. maybe just it just kept me in line a little bit. And then when we went to, when I watched it, I'm like, well this is uh, this is good. Like I mean that opening scene, oh, milk dropping, milk awesome. dropping in a good way. Yes. Milk dropping in a good way. I was <laughs> like this it. is fan. Fantastic. Now, my argument or my addition to what you're saying is if they just I just it's what I do find weird is I thought they would have had a structure for the trilogy. It almost sounds like they never did have a structure for the trilogy. I've been saying that the whole time. Per se. That they, that they just yeah. said, we're going to make this movie. Then we're going to go make the next movie. And then we're going to make the third movie. But I always thought that, you know, they they had an idea, a blueprint, if you will, laid out of what they wanted to do. Maybe maybe they did. I think they a, do a now. a very low degree, but it was just very bizarre because, hear me out, what I'm thinking is, what about if this opening was the opening to Halloween Kills? I think it still would have worked, but that that's all we saw. It was just because of the, the paranoia. I Don't get me wrong. I know one of the themes here is that Michael Myers is gone. It's the year later. And they're Four just years. On, well, no, no, the opening. Oh, and to, in the opening. The, op- the opening part. The opening Got part, uh, and I know that they're saying like the threat is gone, but not really gone. People are still scared because they know that he's out there, and so they're latching on it. So I know that that's one of the elements that propels the 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 theme, one of the themes of the movies. But I just thought, what if this was the opening to Halloween Kills, and you just saw it, and it was to create that paranoia aspect of that like what the hell's going on here everything's everything's crazy whatever it might be and and then you just dismissed it so we were introduced to Corey in the last movie but but then maybe he did go away for it maybe he didn't get off maybe it was an accident but he he did like two two years or whatever it may be and then we we pick up with him after i just thought i wonder if that, that would have worked if that would have been less jarring for people they're like oh we're back to this guy or by dismissing it all together, just having that as an opening and not even revisiting it again, would have people been even more turned off from Halloween Kills? Wow. But I thought they'd be waiting. Dude. Yeah, I think if, they, if that would have been the opening to Kills, and then right after that, it didn't even have to say it's 2018 or 19. Just show it. I guess it has to be present time, same night. Yeah. So you show that happening, although... You couldn't I, do that because that conversation couldn't happen between the little boy and, and Corey because he's talking about Michael Myers kills babysitters, not kids. So this has to be after the effects of, of, of Michael Myers being in recent well, they, events. Yeah, I know. They could tweak it a little bit, but you're right because yeah. I guess the town doesn't know any of the terror that's happened yet. Right. So maybe they're going to a – maybe Halloween was on a Friday and someone was having a November 1st and All Saints Day party. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. No, no, oh, it could... a day after something. But I mean, because at the end of the day, you you've seen the comments. People are thinking that like this was uh, poorly written and and structured and whatever. And again, I don't see there are there are elements in all three of these movies that I'm like, why did they think they could get away with that line or what was that? Uh, one 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 thing. And again, there's going to be some spoilers here, guys. But we're not. I don't think we're going to go into full spoilers for everybody. But um, unless and maybe we'll. we'll, we'll We'll give you that one second warning. I won't do it because Dave will kill me. <laughs> but if you haven't seen it, don't maybe want to know anything about it, then maybe just jump ahead a little bit here. I'll try to time stamp this as best I can. But ultimately, uh, now I lost my train of thought. We're talking about uh, Corey and the night. Yeah. Of. Yeah, but now I'm I, sorry by by talking. Maybe it'll come back to me. Okay. By by going off and worrying about I was going to spoil something, I uh, I I lost it. Okay, well, let me, maybe if I talk, it'll, it'll jar yeah. you. So here's what they could have done. They could have had the same open, right, and just not had that uh, that that part said from that little boy about Michael Myers kills babysitters, not, you know, and just left that part out, have the opening yeah. happen, and then right after that scene, then cut to 1978, all right, and then do like they did, and then go, and then come to, you know, 2018, Back to it, back to, uh, you know, the people that were with with them leaving the fire of the house and all that, okay? So they could have done that, and then that could have been like a tease and not revisited it. You're right, and then brought it back in the new one and then say, okay, so now this is what happened, and, you know, this is what happened, and Corey went here, and now he's back here. and That would have been a very— And and he's even done time. He's even done time for it. That's or what something. I'm saying. Like, That's what I'm yeah, saying. He comes back in. Yeah. 
That right. would have been really cool because he does anyway. He does come back. Yeah, we're just seeing the, you know, they they they, they see 2019, but who cares if it's 2018? That could still yeah. happen that same night. Why not? Why can't that happen? Of course it could happen. It's Halloween. Anything could happen. So just yeah. have things a little write it a little differently. But here's the thing. Just, just say Halloween when, scares him. Like, not Michael Myers why per not? se, but every year Halloween, he's not a Halloween fan, which is why he's not going out. He says, we have candy for him, and we've left candy out for the trick-or-treaters. Like, the conversation just needs to be tweaked ever so slightly just to allow it to happen same night. And we already know Michael Myers is a threat. Yep. <laughs> because he's, we've seen the other two movies, that there, or the other movie at this point. And right. so we know he's out there. So it would have been kind of a cool... A cool play on it, but again, that that this is why some of the arguments are out there that they didn't really know what they were doing a hundred percent. But oh, I take it I'm back. I'm not sure. Yeah, See, I, I, this I, is the I, thing. I, I agree with you because I've seen your post, and I I have to think they knew what they wanted to do, and he didn't want to make the same movie. Everybody wanted the same movie as 2018, but this time, Lori wins at the end. We got that. We've got the con. We've got the fight between them, whether it be in 2018. Whether it be it wasn't in the in Halloween Kills, whether it be in what in in eight, uh, Halloween Two, which I know this timeline doesn't follow, but I'm just saying, all you right. Halloween fans, we've had this fucking before. You saw him get his head chopped off in H two O. We've <laughs> had the conf- we've had the confrontation numerous times already. It happened in 2018. You have your movie right there. Just pretend he didn't escape at the end then, and he's dead in the fire. And then you know, God rest his soul and your souls. Like, be happy with it. But then for everything else, they're continuing it, and they did their own thing. And you could be the judge of whether or not you thought it was successful or not. There are some people that are coming out of the woodwork. I'm seeing, I liked it, I loved it, it ruled, whatever. But for the most part, it's boom, this sucked, holy shit, what the hell did I just watch? Ba-ba, ba-ding, ba-ding, ba-doom. Actually, it's just this, those three things repeated over and over again. I feel sorry for them, not, and I don't mean this in a facetious <laughs> way or a pompous. No, I do. I feel sorry for yeah. Them because they they couldn't. I, I I'm not saying to, because to be like you know that type of person. Well, I got it and they didn't, so I feel bad for them. But I'm saying it in that, like that way, but guy? but not not to sound rude. No, I'm just saying I I do feel sorry that they didn't enjoy it because I want to enjoy everything I watch too, especially a mm-hmm. franchise film. So like I feel bad that they weren't able to just take it for what it was and, and go on the ride. But as I'm watching the movie, I even told Francesca, I said, I remember there was, it was like halfway going on and um, there, there's a lot of focus on on Ali and Corey and, and their relationship, what's going on. And I told my daughter, I said, man, people are going to be having kittens about this movie, I told her. I knew halfway through the movie. I said, this is, this is they're not going to like this. They are Dude, not going to. We should revisit Jason Goes to Hell. Just you and I together. Well, because... here's the difference. <laughs> I I made a Jason Ghost Hell comparison because I literally heard that thing when listen when Alex when they reviewed it on the Skeleton Crew and he says, well, the guy said, um, you know, add dumb Marcus because you know it'll give you a chance to really be happy when you see Jason on the screen and because you've been missing him all movie and it's like no fuck you. However, in this case, it was great to see Michael when he does get his and my theory his. Strong Strength back, which makes perfect fucking sense, to come out and do it and then go into where he goes at the end. That is triumphant to see. And not only triumphant to see him go out and kill, exciting to see, okay, now we're going to get full-fledged Michael and Lori. Let's do this. Let's see it. And whatever it takes to get there, again, it's thematic. There's three themes. There's three themes. The first movie is about obsession. The second movie is about hysteria. The third movie is about the effects of, of, of what's the word um tr- trauma and and the passing on of evil and as the great fiona apple said in one of her lyrics evil is a relay sport when the one who gets burned turns to pass the torch and that fucking resonates with me and i love it and that's what that's i'm saying great, that's a great lyric oh she's amazing so now she so now this it. this movie when we reviewed it on banana lasers the last one halloween kills we were talking about, I said, I, and I made a statement on that show. I said, I do not believe at all that this movie was written, that these three movies were written as a trilogy. I think part one ended and then they wrote ends. And then after ends, they're writing the next one because it's too disjointed. They corrected the mistakes of one to go into two. And now, but I'm taking it back. I think this was all by design in the first place. Now what we see in three, because of what I said about the three themes, but the, the difference is part three there's no fucking humor. There's none of that fucking bad dialogue. Bad, bad, there was bad dialogue in the Arguable. first two. 
Okay. No, no, there was a no, hell of a lot less. Yeah, wait, you're right. There's like two okay. lines, two right, lines that, I, that come to mind right now. But and one of them though is a character trait. So my wife's Carrie's problem with it was that she thought Jamie Lee Curtis was not good in it. She thought her a her acting was off. And I said, well, she was never really the best actress. Sorry if I offend anybody. Like she's always been a passable actress, but I never like went, wow, that Jamie Lee. <laughs> like right. You know, to be honest, I'm sorry. It is the, re the reality. But I always thought she was passable. And as she's gotten older, her you know I don't give a shit attitude seems to to bleed into the role and the, the movies a little bit. So this this Lori has. And my, so my wife couldn't buy the Lori that was, even though she explains it in her writing and in her telling of the story, Carrie thought it sounded forced that she went from this warrior woman that prisoner was like on was, edge for 40 years to now I'm not being scared anymore. It she was just, forced by her, by I, the yeah. therapist. By Lori, okay. she, it was a front because Ellie made a reference to it. You make it seem like this and this, but it's really bullshit. So okay. she's trying, I like that. Yeah. yeah, she's trying to do it, but think about this. Set herself she also up. Yeah. did lose her daughter and her son-in-law and other people in her life that mattered. So now she's like, okay, this is what I have left. I have me and my granddaughter and my friend Lindsay here. You know what I mean? This is what I have with the people from that, at that time period. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit older now. I'm a little bit wiser. Michael's been gone. All I did was cause hysteria. People are blaming me as they did in the movie, which made no sense. Because I felt so bad for her. It was like how Loomis got to blame in part one. Damn oh, you for letting I him like, But I like that aspect. Oh, but when she comes out of the shopping. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But again, that is hysteria. Why, why would they blame her? They said, oh, you messed with him. He didn't mess. He escaped yeah. fucking the thing she didn't provoke it she didn't go there and cause the accident although that is a theory True. but i don't think yeah. that they're thinking that so anyway but that's that is hysteria that's how things work in the world a, a ball gets rolling a rumor and all of a sudden that's a fact especially in a small town so more hysteria shit but that happens here it's like but i i think it makes perfect sense that the character of Lori would turn into that she's like okay i have to preserve what i have left and yes i'm still dealing with it in my own life way. yes yeah. I, I can't do Maybe this the forever book's helping her I don't want my granddaughter to get killed or this. I, I want to carry on. And I think it's so good that she would get to that place, even if she is trying to kid herself. Everybody does what they do to get by. And that is how, at this point in this franchise and in her life, she's doing it. To me, that's a realistic portrayal of somebody going through a change based upon things that have happened. It's You know what okay. this I compare this it, to H2, and I know people hate it. I should bring H2. my wife down here. She, you have well, to convince her. I, w I was actually okay with it. I bought, I sometimes just, sometimes it's face value. Sometimes I'll be questioning and going, wait a second, what's going on here? So I actually, I, I didn't, it was some of the dialogue, though, that was spoken after seeing that a character. Like, you got to grab, got show life your tits or whatever. What was that line? And then she throws the, and that, that just seemed out of well, character and out of place. Does, but she's, remember <laughs> the show character of Lori line? Well, yeah, she goes, you, you want to rip off your and show uh, life your tits. I forgot what it was. I should know. I watched it twice. And, now. Then, and then she throws the, the, uh, the, the, the pumpkin shit down on the ground. It just was like, well, that was kind of jarring. And out of nowhere, just those are those are the isms of this trilogy, which, again, remember, I've I've like I've loved all the first two. And I like this one. So I, this is coming just from a, we're being trying to be critical. I'm trying to be taken from both. angles. that that seemed a little fish out of watery. Yes, but in, in the context of it all, for, for her character and what she's been through and what she's attempting to do, she's still going to have a little something in there, and it's going to make her seem quirky sometimes. And do, I, I just see that as a human being. I could see somebody doing that. Maybe it's a little movie-ish to have them do that. I guess I can't see anyone in my life doing it. But then again, I don't know anyone that's that's lived through something like that. So I, it's hard for me to say. But it's like I like that they brought back the knitting. I thought that was cool. Yeah. There's, there's so many little touches that oh, they throw in here. Like you, we've already talked about the fonts. It's already over social media. The font from the first Halloween to Halloween 2018, used for the title card. The font for Halloween two versus Halloween Kills, the title card, and then of course Halloween three, Season of the Witch, and Which and Halloween funny. Ends, the title card. Uh, that's cool. And the fact that you know Michael Myers really is secondary. He's in this. Don't get me wrong. Like, but I, but he's not in it to the extent everybody is, I think, anticipating or wanting, uh, which is, again is a plus, but is what is being yeah. used uh, uh, as a argument against the film. Uh, and so that's kind of funny that they they did that too because, as we know, Halloween three season of the witch only has Myers in it from a ad on the commercial or on the TV for the actual movie of Halloween. 
Well, yeah, exactly. So he's not but in it. <laughs> a complete left turn, just like Halloween 3 was. A complete freaking sub- – people are expecting one thing and getting another, and that's 100% what yes. happened here. And, like again, I believe in this movie that they go back to each and every movie in this franchise and take something from it. And if you watch it, you can pick – I'm having a little trouble – uh, with the H two O and with Halloween four, although Halloween four, I I think oh, it's Halloween fair. Halloween four is the, the telekinetic aspect. I saw that right. That was the first thing that popped in my head. Well, it I guess I guess it was flashes. four. Okay. Yeah. So there's that. Four okay. And so there's five. I guess you can. There's my note. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah. So there you go. I'm gonna put that in my note for four because that's what it was. It was that the only thing I was thinking about was the um, that the fact that they were at the at a garage and that somebody drove a tow truck out. Because that did happen in this movie too, but that yeah, and there's that's more yeah, that's face value. Too. But that yeah. was saying that. So now the only one left I can't find a comparison to is H two O, but I do believe there there has to be one here. Well, but to Laurie me, Lori killing him at the end. Well, yeah, yeah uh, that's true. the one that she yeah. chopped his head off. Clear, Spoilers, clear, although it's a paramedic, <laughs> it's a fucking paramedic head. Uh, but you know, for all intents and purposes, if you just don't. Think of resurrect them at all, and just H two O. It's the definitive end. We hope until they reboot it. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> they will. I don't think. I, know. Well, I hope not. Oh, I, 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 I I'm, I'm, I'm joking, but so that but still, people are I, seriously saying that though they're going to find a way oh, and this and that because there's money to be made. I get it, but I still don't know unless they do the route that Carpenter wanted to do in the first place. And they're going to do other things. Problem is, they're probably Space not going to be good. They're probably not going to be because Carpenter's not as young as he was in 1983. And doesn't have the passion. And it isn't going to be behind the scenes in the writing. So in other words, you could just have any ass write a freaking Halloween movie. And Carpenter can look at it and make a decision and say, oh, yeah, okay, we'll go with this one. It's about Halloween. Mm-hmm. The Candy Corn Killers or some shit. I just, I don't know. I just, well, I don't know. But I kind of lied because I said I wasn't going to get into spoilers. But I do, I really do want to just bring up two two little a few little fan aspects of it. So again, if you haven't seen it, I know we, we said we weren't going to do it. I said I wasn't going to do it, but again, wh- why would you trust me at this point? Mm. We, you've listened to the show long enough. We're going to just jump ahead a little bit. I, like I said, I'll, I'll time to stamp this as best as I can. So here we go into the fight, the, the fight at the end. We've seen the poster art. You've seen some of the alternative posters for this. One came out way back when, where you saw the knife go through the eye of the mask and it looks like a, a well, it is a total homage uh, to uh, the final chapter. Wow, I haven't seen that. Oh, you haven't seen that? I thought you had I don't like get way back when. So there's a poster with the knife in the eye of Michael Myers' mask, and it's it's total Friday Thirteenth Four. Awesome poster. Uh, I wish it was the uh, the official poster for this. Right. It's usually them standing back to back for the standoff look look or whatever it may be. But what I'm uh, what I wanted to reference is in the final fight, the ripping slicing of the hand oh. and him. Showing the hand open, just like Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Oh, wow. I thought You're that right. was really great. And, of course, it, there's that kill that people have already referenced that was very similar to Friday 5, where he lights the 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 flame oh. instead of it being a flare, and he just puts it right, right. into his, his mouth. I thought that was fantastic as well. Yep. So, yep. And you, so you've got the, the references to the zombie films. The zombie franchise were already in the first installment, whether it be from head stomps or just the viciousness of Michael Myers um, from the whole series. So I think you could already say, like, from, from the Rob Zombie's two installments, that they had that covered from a comparison standpoint, like you were talking about. Well, they did it right here too, the, right out of the gate, and here. But yeah, they did the and first Halloween one. three everywhere. They 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 attributed Halloween three throughout the whole freaking thing. They had the masks in part one, part two, the kids, everything here radio involving station, the mask and instead everything. Instead of a TV station, it was like radio a, station. But to me, that was like what do you call it? That was uh, Barry Sims from part six. Yeah, and the other thing from part true. six was the little boy in the beginning, um, because they said that he is scared at night and, and was trying to go to sleep. He's hearing voices. That's what they said about the little boy yeah. in Halloween six. So all this shit, I'm telling you, I keep finding all these things that are coming to these little... Th- that's no, what I'm that's saying. There were a million nods. To text to you. Right. It's a love note to the to fans. And I'm not saying true fans or whatever, because at the end of the day, you still want a good movie. And if they didn't think it was a good movie, they didn't think it was a good movie. I There's nothing we could do. In the, I'm not trying to convince anybody of it. I just... That's fine. I thought it... Yeah. I liked it. I liked it. Uh, but yeah. there's all these little <laughs> nods to not just the Halloween franchise, but to also... Friday four or the Friday franchise or whatever it may be. So the, the, that's what I love. I thought, Oh, that was awesome. That's like a, a little tribute. There was another movie 
when somebody got their where, where their hand went all the way down or it was out oh that's uh, soft five, five i believe maybe that's what i thought of that it see i thought of that that seemed more to me like that than i did jason but when you mentioned jason of course i got it but that's what i was yeah. thinking i was like oh because it was so fucking grody i was like looking at that but oh what the hell was i gonna tell you about this thing all the pieces oh it wasn't overbearing like in other ones they can say they try too hard with the nod and they said, oh, I don't want, you know, everyone's entitled to one good scare. In this movie, everything that you saw, not everything, most of them were done a little more subtle. Little tiny things that you had to really be in the know to pick out. Like a small thing like the way they ran up the stairs, the two to screw in the house, Ellie and, and the kid. That was just like the, what, like in 78. There was a bunch of things in 78 that were there, a couple lines here and that. But there was a... Like everyone says, like Lori, that kills. Lori collapsing down at the end when she thinks her daughter left uh, because she thinks she killed Corey and she slumps down on the ground exactly like part one. Unbelievable. Wow. Like those, 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 like that's exactly just like you're saying. There's so all many these little too. nods that, um, again, does that make a good movie though? I think it just adds to my enjoyment. No, of it because, but, but, but that, I, that's what I'm saying. I like that, but I also like what I was given. From a movie standpoint, my wife was like, how could you like it? It just seems so slapdash. I'm like, no, I don't know. There's something, just there's something about, in this case, we've already got the movie, like, what, 12 times over of mm -hmm. a rampage and of, of a killer that they just decided that they wanted to just, just to try something a little bit different to lead up to the final confrontation. Heaven forbid. Heaven, this is what did you see what Stephen King said? Heaven forbid, but this is what he posted. Stephen King posted it on his Twitter. I enjoyed Halloween ends. It doesn't it doesn't reinvent the wheel, but it's gasp. Surprisingly character driven. There. Character driven. Again, my other comparison to Rob Zombie's H2. H2, for all the hate, it gets one of the things, that, and I happen to love it, of course, but I'm yeah, saying, I, I always again. said, one of the best things about it is what goes on with these characters that have dealt with the trauma of the movie before, right? And, and, and it's almost like Ellie in this movie becomes a little bit like Lori did in H2 with um with her where her character goes not outwardly that's what's brilliant yeah. about it yeah, not, she kept not it whining and, and yeah it no. was and but, but her, the, she's she did the a, best acting in this movie too sorry i cut me off there i didn't no no yeah. we're, we're excited we're no no but she she was great she was great she was this was her her best performance and her character like i said it wasn't outwardly and it came out later and it was but again it made sense for her to be hooked up with this guy. She felt a kinship because they had both been through some shit. And on top of it, he looks like her ex-boyfriend. I thought that right off the bat. And Lori, that was her... Well, it backfired. She wants to heal everyone. That's making her feel better. Again, that's her own psychosis, if you will. That's her own dealing with it. And that's what she said. I wanted to heal myself. I wanted to heal this boy, Corey, because I knew what happened to him. And I want to heal my granddaughter. And I thought maybe two kindred spirits that have gone through something would get together and maybe it would be good for them psychologically. And they both did feed off that. Ellie fed off it without Lori even having to tell her that she was attracted to him already because of the stuff he went through. So they had the idea, hey, let's, maybe they can heal together and heal each other. But of course, then it mm -hmm. backfired because, because Corey encounters Michael. But I mean, so be it. That's fine. And by the way, everything there and the bomb and this and that, that's obviously part five. You know what I mean? That's the beginning without having freaking, you know, the, a bird and the guy get killed and everything else. And there's so many things. And I just think that I understand the initial shock of it, but I consider myself. Again, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back at all. I'm just I just I but I do consider myself a more patient viewer and I don't think there are a lot of patient viewers in modern times. That's all I'm saying. I've but this is something I had to teach myself. You know, and now later on we're going to talk about one movie and I'm I'm going to tell you how fucking impatient I was for that movie. So I, I know that's not Hellraiser, but I was just telling oh, you, wait, well, my wife's just coming down here. I was just giving oh. your thoughts of uh Halloween. Do you want to just yell anything into the microphone right yeah, now? Yeah, let's do it. You, you just said the one. She just used the term. Oh, did you hear that? She goes, it no. was a dumpster fire. The term <laughs> I was making fun of. Oh, I said trash fire earlier, actually. <laughs> she did not. She loved the opening. 
I think that opening, I, I looked at them while we were watching it, and their mouths dropped just like mine did. And so, uh, kudos if you if you don't like oh. the rest of the movie, just enjoy that opening because it's funny. It was great. <laughs> I remember looking at my daughter. She looked at me. We were excited. I was like, thumbs up with what yeah. we just saw. You know, that's how you do it. And it, it's, it's so funny because. Well, let her listen to this. She probably doesn't listen, but let her listen. Maybe no, she's gone. No, she's gone already. Sorry. No, no, no. She's when this comes out, out. Oh, just yeah. play her this little discussion we're having about Halloween, Halloween ends. And maybe, maybe, you know what I'm saying? She'll be like, oh, well, maybe I didn't think of it from that way. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes things help when you hear Here, Here's the difference. She's seen them all, other than the Rob Zombie ones, because she was watching the Rob Zombie ones with me, and she goes, oh, these are, like, these seem way more explicit. Like, she didn't find that they fit the Halloween mold, which is funny because a lot of people do. So there's just like casual horror fans, Halloween fans, there's diehards, and then there's the general public. And so you're going to get these extreme reactions from everybody. Like I had my friend texting me saying he watched it and he's like, I just hated Corey. What the hell were they thinking? And I remember, and like, and then I, I told him I liked it and what I liked about it and some of the things we've been discussing here and whatever, but I'm not changing his mind on it. Like she, right. Carrie, I'd say is a, a casual fan. She likes horror movies. So she doesn't love them. She likes them though. And she'll watch certain ones. Like I said, we went to the, see the first one together in the theater. Uh, the second one, I went with my daughter. Uh, so like it's, it's, <laughs> she's seen most of them, but she says this was definitely like not even on par. She said it was two out of 10 for her. Like she did not <sighs> like it. She just liked that opening. And I'll tell you this. Yeah. I think casual fans to go see this will not like it. Yeah. Because it's not I, what a agreed. horror movie generally is. It's no. not. It's character driven in a different way. Michael, you know, they had that weird angle with him staying where he is and why did this happen and why is Corey doing this and why is Michael acting this way? And I get it. I can sum it up with pretty Maya. See, watching it a second time, the all important second view, it, it allowed me to think, OK, this is just what it is. The guy's fucking he's four years older. He's weaker. And he got his ass kicked at the end of Kills. Yeah. And he needs to freaking recuperate. He is a human being. We find this out. He's not supernatural. However, evil can act as a supernatural force. And maybe there is something about the mask that helps. I don't know. That's another thing that can be discussed. And I was hoping to have a silver shamrock thing on the back of the mask at the end. I was. I said this won't be recorded with Banana Laser. I go, that's why I want this whole thing to end. The mask. Because the mask does. Keep in mind. In part one. In, in 2018. When that when that podcaster holds up the mask, that's when Michael makes wakes up, and that's when everybody, all the other people that were incarcerated, or, or you know, not incarcerated, but at the mental institution with him, they all start freaking acting a fool and going crazy. Then we see the things that happen in the other one, and every time someone puts the mask, on, and Michael always has to put the mask on. There's something about the mask, and even at the end of Kills, they're taunting him with the mask. He had to go and get that mask. So I started thinking, well, maybe this mask. The supernatural aspect is going to be the mask itself. Maybe. Yeah. This is just one of the things I was thinking about. And it's almost like you could almost kind of still say that here. Because after one, after the mask is put on Corey, some of the things he does, you know, they're a little uh, well, a little wild. Uh, you know? The other thing is the way they killed him I thought was great. Like mm. you're bleeding him out. But then and then. So this wow. is what had my wife laughing. The, the, um, the strapping of him on the car. And I'm falling out of town and whatever. And she pulled a me. Whereas if I don't like something, sometimes I'll laugh out loud, like watching it. And she started laughing. And I'm like, what? Like, I thought it was great. I didn't think anything crazy. But she's like, are you kidding me? The town folk all follow. And there's like this long brigade of like cars. And they're, and they're. Well, here's why. I I thought it was a little bit eye rolling at first on my first view last night when I rewatched it. I go, okay. I can rationalize this now. It's been four years. Everybody knows what this bastard has done to the town. I have a feeling that all this stuff has been discussed prior. Hey, if that bastard ever comes back here to this town and we get him, we're going to damn well make sure that freaking we dispose of him. And when this does happen, make the call and say, you know, execute order 66 or whatever you got to do. And we're all going to come together and freaking we're going to, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take him here. We're going to do that. Because remember, they had four years to plan. If it would have been just spontaneous, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Now, the only issue I have, everything I said to myself makes sense there. The way I've learned to rationalize that I think works, except for the woman who attacked, verbally attacked Lori outside of the store. 
with the other woman, the black lady in, in, in the wheelchair. Why would they be there? Why would, because that would show that they have no correspondence with Lori. However, there could have been correspondence through the sheriff's department and other people in the town. So I guess that could work. I'm and, just and saying. maybe it's them saying he's finally dead. And maybe that's the way they, they can make peace with Lori as well, knowing that she actually ended up destroying him. Yeah. Even though, so, I mean, I good. I just love the way they dispose of him because if, oh, amazing. if you thought decapitation right. was was there then 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 this is this is the amazing best it's even better and Dude. the only thing, the only thing i want to do i'm thinking of like a recon where it's like it cory gets away <laughs> and it's and or michael myers gets away and it's cory that got the ball they're really doing it to cory yeah they do yeah they do it to cory instead and then michael myers is still alive for the next one <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh my God! People would have kittens like, about that. Too. What are those serial things? Like what they did, like in uh, Resurrect, Resurrect them, where they right. recon and they go back and then they they show something we didn't see in all the confusion because they no one gives a shit. Corey's still laying dead on the floor in in her house based on how this movie goes. <laughs> Poor bastard. Yeah, yeah. That but is it? I. It was great that there's a couple of things like they did have right out of the gate. You get that DJ and they've got his banner. Weird. You, you got the banner over everything. Like, so we, we established him, but he seemed kind of like a weird when he finally really gets introduced. It's almost like, I'm wondering if there was like, like footage of him earlier in the movie. Like, it's almost like they should have opened with him at the booth instead of just his voice. Cause when he gets introduced or reintroduced into it, it seems kind of forced. Um, also the character that looked like he was going to be kick-ass introduced in 2018 pretty much just gets a minimal role in each movie. And this one being probably the least amount of screen time is the black sheriff. Oh, he sucks the whole thing. He, 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 he's been useless the whole fucking thing. I well, don't know what you're talking about. But that, no, but that's what I'm saying. Like why have him in? The black I don't know. Sheriff. It was dumb. It like, was dumb. He, he, he's, that's what I'm saying. He, they, they feel like you've been introduced to him. It's like, okay, well he's going to be, he's going to be a power to be, he's going to help. And he's next, and he's does nothing. I know the whole thing. But you like, know why? Nothing. <laughs> I'll tell you why. why. But because he's a, he's an outsider. He didn't grow up in Haddonfield. He's not like Frank. You know what I'm saying? Who's yeah. the freaking the head of it? He's been there. He's experienced 1978. He's there. So he's someone else coming in with a different type of attitude. I mean, that's just the, the best I got. But yeah, it's almost like he's a walk, like a figurehead for someone that has to be, you know, this guy to come in and do it. But to me, I never liked it from Jump. It, all it reminded me of, and it's probably the same actor. Duke. No, everyone says that too. No, not Creighton Duke. The black <laughs> sheriff from freaking um the town that dreaded sundown, the second one. Remember that freaking guy? It's the yeah. same exact part. It might be the same actor. I thought that since the first time I saw it. I go, where oh, they get this guy right off the set of freaking town that dreaded sundown and put him on this movie? Here, let's do this. Well, it's just so frustrating because like you figure you should have had something. Like so that's where I just like, well, why would you have introduced him? You you're doing all these other things where you're introducing people like uh, but I did like how they had um, Lindsay come back as a total secondary character in this, yep. and and nothing happens to her yep. at all. <laughs> it was great. It was great. You know what I liked even more? The little the little kid that was being babysat in part one yeah. that came well, back in part two. Okay, listen, yeah. though. He makes jokes in part one. He makes a joke in part two, kind of. My favorite babysitter. Now they bring him in, literally the same thing they did to freaking Jar Jar Binks at the end of freaking part two when they shut him up for good. You only see him at the end walking solemnly because there's a yeah. funeral. So I think they did it again. I'm going to make comparisons to the freaking the Star Wars trilogy. And I thought you would hate this because this is – the last Jedi of this freaking oh, franchise. Last Jedi, and, though. But you get what I'm saying. Whoa, it, yeah. People had expectations at the end of the one, and when Luke throws the thing, it's the same thing here. You're expecting Michael to do what Michael does and everything else, and Laura to do what she. Instead, this movie comes, and they go the complete opposite direction. They take a complete left turn, and I thought that was brilliant. And I thought, like I said, it's the last Jedi, so that's why I thought you would hate it. But I'm so happy that you didn't. Uh, and I'll say one more thing. I love that little thing. It's cute. It's just enough. It's not overdone. It's a nice little touch of freaking humanity and hometown stuff. And it, the, the whole thing with Frank and Lori. I think it's freaking great. I love that. Yes. I, I was going to bring that up. I was gonna say, that's my <laughs> yeah. best. That's my favorite stuff with Jamie Lee in this movie. I thought that's where she shines. Yeah, to be man. honest, I thought that stuff was really good. And the interactions between them and it hit on the right note and everything else, mm -hmm. the cherry blossoms, everything. I'll say one more thing. When she writes her, when she writes the final line and she says evil takes different shapes mm -hmm. and that's a beautiful, the shape. 
And I love that. And I thought yep. that was a great, you know, that they just had to, we have to wedge that in, in there in a good way, in, in my opinion. And I love how they would, they did that with, with that term. I, and again, guys, I could totally see why some people might be turned off by this, but I, I mean, I don't know. We've had the same movie. We've had Michael Myers going like he went on a damn rampage in the last one. Uh, gore, right. gore galore and everything. I mean, this is, this one has gore, but it's definitely more tame compared to the last one. I, in my opinion, just from the fact that the kills are definitely less here. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's because it, it's focused, like you said, character driven or Stephen King's character driven. Right, it, but if you're expecting Michael Myers to be out and about from the get go, you will be disappointed at the gate. Like maybe lower those expectations. Well, <laughs> they gave us more than enough of that in Halloween Kills. That's exactly. That's it. all he did was kill, and it was, and I yeah. loved it for it. But and that's fine. This is a different type of movie. It's like they said, okay, let's have him do some killing here and a little bit here. In the middle, the middle chapter will be Michael just kicking ass, and really, that's what it was. So if you look at it from that from that standpoint, it's like the Force Awakens, and this and this, you know, let's get let's get things rebooted, and let's reintroduce. Though, yeah. yeah, Lori's all effed up this way and everything else, blah blah blah, and then. The middle is the middle. Michael's just going to kick ass the whole movie, and everyone else is going to be busy with hysteria over here, so Michael can have free reign. Then the next one, we're going to we're going to scale it back. And the thing is, they said this. John Carpenter said that it's going to be a departure. It's online. I've been posting this stuff. I, I don't know why people were mm -hmm. not expecting it. And Lori, and pardon me, Jamie Lee Curtis sending it was going to piss people off. And so, so I mean, I was expecting something weird up. to happen. Yeah, something weird to happen. I have to watch the trailer again because I oh. actually not that I'm anti trailer, but I watched the teaser way back when, and I watched the trailer when it dropped a few. Well, it's probably more than a few weeks ago now, um, but I watched it just quickly, and I was like, oh yeah, it's good, it's, it's good. Now I want to rewatch it because it's, I think Jason Smith posted this on one of uh, on his page, um, Sinister Cinema, I believe. Sinister Cinema, excuse me. Um, Did you like it? The, yeah, he seems like he oh, loved it actually. Awesome. Him and his girlfriend so or fiance. Because I know it. he loves uh, Halloween so much. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Great. but he didn't like. He actually thought. I think this is the favorite of the series. He's actually wasn't. He has been mildly on board with these new ones. With the he's new not, ones. He's been mostly right. disappointed, and this is the one he loved. <laughs> That's I, cool. I'm paraphrasing, but I'm pretty sure I've got that right. Man, but I'm he just mentioned, uh, Well, he's around. I never see him. I have no. I never have correspondence with him ever again. Well, then reach out. Go, hey, Dick Lips. Yeah, he loves that. He loves when you call him Dick Lips. He was at Monster Palooza. <laughs> he sent me a text yesterday because he found a Spooky's hat. He's like, want it? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, great. Like, it was like exactly like oh. like there. <laughs> oh, that's freaking amazing. Maybe Dave Parker would rock it. <laughs> it wasn't in his top hundred though. At least let me double check. Yeah. I don't think it was. I gotta. Um, there was so a here, I was gonna make with Jason Smith. Uh -huh. He loved and, and again, I, I can't. I don't know what's going on. Last time I couldn't talk. This time, my You're mind. Like I, my mind, like the the idea is already gone. I have like no me. clue where I was going with. I've been with doing that, that for thing. fifty years. Maybe I just wanted to get a Jason Smith uh, plug in there or something like that. Uh, maybe. Yeah, horror <laughs> of Jason Smith. Yes. <laughs> so how about this? Anyone that's going to talk about freaking lack of Michael and everything else, this is, okay. We've had Michael on the screen, especially Halloween Kills, all over the place going crazy. Keep in mind, man, you can't make anybody happy no matter what you do. You do the same old thing, they say, oh, it's the same old thing. You do something different, oh, wow, we want it different, but not that. I mean, you can't make anybody happy, and I just realize that. To me, if I can make sense and if I take the movies good, I don't care about anything else. I sit down, every movie the same. And if it if if it makes sense to me, it does. If it does, it doesn't, and that's it. But and if I enjoy it, I enjoy it. Freddy Krueger in Nightmare on Elm Street Part One is on the screen for freaking seven to eight minutes. That is that's it. what makes him scary, right? But people forget that because then we get Part Four, which I know you don't like, but I like, and he's like, it's waka 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 oh, screen nice. time like maxed. Uh, and that I think that's his most screen time. And I could be wrong. Probably. Listeners, chime in and prove me wrong. <laughs> yeah, why not? Change what my about mind. <laughs> well, enough of that. I've been seeing a lot of fight me posts lately. Fight oh me. Oh my god, fight oh, me. Oh, I, I just want to say no. Just but I don't say yeah. nothing because I don't troll. It's fine. But I mean I, the thing I troll. Is, yeah. I, very rarely do I do it, but then I read someone like I hate my other thing. 
you know, other than Shocktober, where I feel like I'm getting a pinky in the asshole while I'm watching a movie, uh, is when people, but like, nah, that, nah, uh, that's not what happened, or whatever. Just an absolute dismissive response yeah. on social media is my biggest pet peeve, has been, and always will be. I hate that nah dismissiveness. It's your wealth. Yeah. It's the nah dismissive. Someone did it on oh. one of your... One of your posts, and then I wasn't going to chime. I was reading. I'm did like, I say anything reading. back? Probably no, not, right? You are, okay. you are again, a general. You just said it's cool. You're not understanding what I'm saying, and whatever. And then he took it like, yeah, I'm just a big idiot, or I'm, I'm, I'm dumb. Huh? But I didn't I respond back to I'm that not, because no, I won't. I, I did. I said, I'm glad you said it, <laughs> and, then, and that's <laughs> it. And then he he came at me with one, but it was on your post. But I, I did it. I was like, I, I just, I'm like, I I I should have known better. I'm old yep. enough. I'm just, like, just leave it alone. I, but yep. I didn't engage after. I wasn't gonna. I'm not starting a, a a thing. But it's just those stupid posts of the nah. They drive me crazy. Like it's. I know everybody's entitled to opinion, but I've said this on the show. I think everybody knows me by now. That's not true. Because <laughs> there's some. Yeah. I want to think that that's true, but then you hear some of these opinions, or or it's not even the opinion because you can like or hate whatever. It's the way. The way you go about, I guess, backing up right. said opinion. And that's what irks me. And I think that's what irks a lot of people. But it's usually the fact that they just, you know, oh, this was this was garbage, whatever. Like, I know Carrie, she told me last night the reasons why she thought it, it was a dumpster. Fire. Like, she told me everything. Well, yeah, uh, she's in your house. You're back beside me here she's not going to relate to everybody but like when people right. just post that without anything and then some of them will give you examples oh i didn't like this i didn't like that i thought this was weird and whatever that's fine that that's that's what we want or they'll say listen to our show for more information if they have a show mm. fine it's like a teaser to, to listen to the show i get all that but and again it's not like you can't hate something i did not really like the new hell i was more mm. so the new hellraiser to me is like a six out of ten Oh, uh, this one was like a seven out of 10 for me. Mm. Uh, Halloween, you know, scream was like about a six out of 10 Te to, to be honest, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like usual sort of reigns supreme. And that's my favorite out of the batch, but not, not by a huge margin, but, uh, I'd have to watch, I have to still watch it again, but I think I'm like 7.5 out of 10 on that one. Man, I don't know which I, I can I rate, I rate Hellraiser chainsaw and, and Halloween ends are the same um scream is a little lower it's a it's it's a, a seven but the other three i have the same and i'm like hmm what am i gonna do with these things it's gonna be interesting to see i don't know well, at this point hey, i think i like hellraiser hey, the most I, well that's fine I know a lot of people seem to i wish we had a friday the 13th because imagine that Aww. this year just just this year you have child's play with another with another series out on uh on the second season out we had scream we had hellraiser we had texas chainsaw massacre Halloween. and they've been good at least I mean, good yeah like i mean why right i, 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 I will say we had vengeance I and i know it's a fan film and i'm not actually i was tired of fan films i've said it on the show i'm yeah. like oh, fuck fan films i'm done with them i think those were my exact words but I will every now and then, especially if it's Friday the 13th, I'll give it a chance. And I'm not saying that that's perfect. There's way too many dialogue scenes for its own good for a fan film. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds weird, but for a fan film, you've got to be right. a little supposed bit to be gotta, short. Yeah. And then there's these two morgue scenes that could have been cut right out. Uh, yeah. And uh, there was, they're tried for comedy and, and it's not, it's amusing, but it's not great. Like just cut them out. The running time would have been condensed because That's my problem. they did a better job with Jason. I'm, I'm still, this guy loves doing the guy that made them loves doing massacre sequences where there's a lot of people. I'm not a big fan of those in my Friday the 13th. I know there was no. one in Freddy versus Jason in the cornfield, yeah, but well. that's really kind of it from a massacre standpoint. Um, when, when it's more just one-on-one -on -one or two here, people there or whatever it may be. But, he, although he does that a couple of times in this, there's still enough good stuff. But you've got to be a fan of Jason Lives, I think, to fully appreciate the movie. Because these oh. these two movies were sequels to Jason Lives. And I wasn't a huge fan of Vengeance. I thought, again, I'll give them this. For a fan film, the guy makes them look and sound great. Um, Vengeance had an editing issue, though. I remember something was weird. Maybe a glitch. This one was very clean that way. Not perfect. Not perfect, but... Probably my favorite of the fan films 
uh, with maybe Never Hike Alone in there as well. Um, Never Hike Alone because it tried to do something different with the found footage and that one actor guy. But if you want more True right. Blue Friday, this one would probably be for the fans more. Why is everything going to part six? They did the same thing with the freaking Never Hike Alone and shit now. Why? Why six? But well, well, whatever. I guess because he's out there to do it. But I mean, waiting. What's that? Eighteen. No, you said he's out there waiting. Oh, <laughs> right, exactly. So, uh, shit. The problem with Vengeance Two or whatever the hell, I haven't watched it because I know you liked it. I know some other people said they liked it. It's the running time. If it was like an hour oh. and twenty minute movie and it's a fan film, fine. I'll put it on my YouTube. I'll do my thing. That's I fine. Skip. But I, I did do on. the skip. I, I I did do the ten second skip or five second skip thing a couple yeah, of times. Yeah. I I can't. I that's well, just the way I am. I'm sorry to say, but that's the way I am. It's an hour and forty five minutes. It has. It's too it's long. It's a fan film. You got it. Like that. Like that's when you're like. I give them credit, guys. We're not skimping. They're trying to. They threw it all out there, man. Like, I, for one side, I respect that. Another side, trim it down to an hour and a half, an hour or eighty minutes. You've got you. You might have the best. Like, I already think it is the best, but there's still problems with it of the fan films. But I'm just saying, okay. but there's still problems with it. At least Never Hike Alone knew I'm going to be fifty five minutes in out. Done. Right. Right. So this one had more people. Cut down some of the characters. Cut down some of the dialogue. Cut out some of the scenes. Play around with it. I almost want to do a fan edit of that and see if I could still make it make sense, <laughs> but cut it down to like a time frame that makes that doesn't have people going whoa. Now again, I'm impatient. I I, I have I guess my patience is very limited. I, but for fan films, I have no problem. I watched The Shining the other night. Not one problem with it. Well, the, the long running time. It's how a movie is made, right? That's what you're right. doing. And like I said, production value is great. They do nighttime scenes that I that if we did the movie, I would be very happy if the scenes looked like that. Nice. This is why I'm like, I like the fact that these guys they have talent, and I and I guess I have to respect the fact that we're not getting Friday the Thirteenth on a mainstream official status. So we we at least have these fan films. But I'm Something. almost like, why why wouldn't you guys just make a regular movie then with an offshoot of Jason like a like like Victor Crowley did or Haywire or Hayride or whatever the hell the, those movies were. And it's like essentially Jason. But then you can make you could just market it. You can actually get money from it officially. So like in one side I'm like, oh thanks for giving us Jason stuff. But on the other side I'm like, why would you put yourself in this box? And you could have actually just made a horror movie. Your production value is great comparatively to a lot of these. I've seen movies that are officially on my list that are uh, supposedly official releases this year that, and I put vengeance on my list or I, I will be on my list, but I've seen movies that are on that list that have streamed or, or, or whatever that are garbage in comparison. Sure. I buy that. Yeah. Anyway, I, I'm going on a, I just, I'm just thinking about Friday now. I'm like, it's got to happen now. With all the success of all this other stuff and everybody coming out with something, I think there's enough. Somebody's got to do something. There's no question. They're sitting on these rights. They're going to do it. LeBron even James, where are you? <laughs> Dude, just, yeah. I don't care who it is. Just get the damn thing well, made and do it. Do a good job. I and was even wrong if, already. I thought I thought uh, the resurgence of Halloween in 2018 was going to be enough for uh, the lawsuit to just say, hey, fuck, we're sitting on a gold line right. here. Let's settle this and get it out for 2020, which would have been the 40 year later for Friday. Would have been great. Would have been the same thing, aping off the success of Halloween anyway. It would have been a perfect marketing thing and a perfect fan thing. That never happened. So now that this series is done and the lawsuit is supposedly done, maybe – now we'll get it. I'm not saying that I need an Alice situation, although I still think um, a Jason versus the final, uh, the survivors is not necessarily a bad premise, but that seems more fan filmish at this point, as it opposed does. to another installment. Um, well, did you hear, did you hear the news? Like it's like, it's real news. <laughs> it's being posted on Instagram and other stuff, you know, saying something about, Heather Lagenkamp wants to have one more, uh, you know, fight fight with, fight. yeah, uh, no Everybody shit. Does. Corey Feldman uh, does. Everybody does. I, I no want to have shit. one final fight with. It's going to make money. Why would you not do it? And uh, we've been saying this since they brought back freaking Michael and Lori in 2018. Okay. And then they did Marilyn Burns. Well, not her, but they did her character in the new Texas. And, uh, and then we've been talking about, let's have a, a, an Alice or a genie or something. We've been talking, this is common sense. Why would they not want to do it? Like that's news. 
Heather Langenkamp wants yeah. to do it. Yeah, no shit. She would get paid and freaking it's yeah, a Heather, hot thing right Heather, Heather Langenkamp wants money. I, uh, like, who, that's why I made the joke. I want to do it. I want to fight Jason, Freddie, everybody in the yeah, next movie. Make I'm it doing happen, it. Dave. <laughs> Produce it for me. You know, how is it even news? Of course they all want it. You don't think they're talking about this, all these franchises? Think about all these franchise horror films. You know, they, honestly, I'm going to give Chucky credit because they kind of did it first by bringing back Alex Vincent and by bringing back, what's her name Um, from from part two? Jennifer Tilly? No, oh, no. at least. Uh, oh, yeah, but, uh, yeah I, I can't remember her name. I know who you're The girl from 90210, whatever. Um, Emily Valentine. So um, either way, they, they've been doing this. They've been doing this. It's reboot time, and that's what they're doing. So, yeah, why not do it a nightmare? But there's another one. What about Freddy? I, just stop. You cannot do it with Robert England. I, they, they, I hate to say it. They got to let that, that franchise be because you can't win. You can't do it with no, England you, or anybody else you, you bring you in. Can't. If you do it serious, <laughs> they're not going to like it, like Jackie or Haley. And if you make it jokey, I'm not going to like it. So you well, here's win. the problem, though. I can't they, win. <laughs> you, they can't win. And no different than what, so I was watching the Zombies Halloweens again. And I'm like, so here's the thing. These are remakes. Yet, they're not really. They're, they're Because he wears the exact same Michael Myers mask. Okay, I know there's a slightly redesigned for every movie. The, the mu- music's there because it's iconic. But then, essentially, it's just another sequel. So if you're going to remake it, as we jokingly say, and I know that uh, Watson said this about the Hellraiser, is remake it. But like this was just like Halloween re- revisited. Essentially, the you, you get a bit of origin that, that kind of set it up, and you get part one and two kind of combined uh, in Zombies version. Same, same mask. If anything, they should have put like a scarecrow mask like Corey had in, in this uh, this new one. That was kind of right? freaky look. And yeah. then uh, and then change the music up. But if you did that, people would have been really up in arms, I think, back in the day with no dun 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 and, and right. whatever. And so same with Friday. Friday came out, rebooted. You can't do it without a hockey mask and or the sack. And, and they had the sack. The, the, the ch- 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 so like again with Friday with Nightmare on Elm Street. They're gonna. You're obviously certain elements have to remain. He's burnt. He's got the nine fingers. Or if you if you don't have that, is it really true to the character or to the essence of the film? I don't think anybody can get away with having a Freddy that's not burnt <laughs> with the nine fingers. But then do you have the music, or do you yeah. create your own soundtrack for it? See, I think they could go back. I think there's I think there's a a, a large argument just like i think they could go back for a pamela story and tell and redo friday the 13th the true way with pamela but mainstream audiences won't like that and i don't think it could get bankrolled as easily um same thing with freddie having freddie as a, a, m- a minimal character that only has like five to ten minutes of screen time i'm not too sure if they'll green like that but that would be it's the too best bad. way to come back to it 2010 was 2010 was interesting because it's not as big as a. I didn't like it the first time I watched it. It's grown on me over time. Still don't love it, but I like it enough. It's decent enough. Uh, right. Is I guess how I'll word it. But the, with the micro naps and the sluggish pace at the beginning, something was missing out of the gate. And, and the only thing about the performance of um, what's his face is that they overdub his voice to be that extra bassy sound. Sorry, say hi to your daughter for me too. Yeah, she's Hello. here. No, she's she's not going to be on camera because she just got up and, but she saw the movie with me. She saw Halloween Ends with me. What are your thoughts on Halloween Ends? Well, I, I thought it was it was pretty good. Like I thought it was a good ending because there's no way he's going to come back after that. You know, I don't know if you're allowed <laughs> to say sure. spoilers. Yeah, we already kind of said at the beginning it would be spoilers. So. Oh yeah. Because there's there's no way he's gonna be compiled back together after being like crushed. Like there's no way. Wow. Like th- that's like a good ending. I mean, if he was thrown like what you're saying, if he was thrown in like the water or whatever, there's a chance he could have survived. But since he's like completely destroyed, there's like no way. There's like no. I don't think there's any room for a sequel unless that uh they bring back that one kid. How can they? Maybe he's gone. Remember? Oh yeah, but he had a mask on, so maybe. Yeah, but they took it off. I hear you. I hear you. What about the rest of the movie? Besides the end, what did you think about? Because it was a lot different than the other ones, right? <laughs> like, especially these last two in the franchise. I'm trying to remember what the other two ones were. And I know I like this one more, but the others. Really? Two, I feel like I was kind of lost. Did you guys? 
kind of like a different story, kind of. It was, right, it was yeah. a different type of story. Right, and you liked it for that. Yeah. Wow. Dave, ask Francesca if she noticed this. Because someone wrote this in the comments saying, oh my God, the second I saw that that um, steel chopper thing, I knew it was coming back for the ending. I'm usually good at that. You know, you you introduce a lawnmower or a weapon in the in the first act like they did in Terrifier 2. You know, it's right. coming back for the end. I did not see that. I, I mean... I would just watched it. And I'm like, okay, they're in a a junk mill with with uh, for demolishing cars. I didn't think, oh, that's how they're gonna just dis- kill Michael Myers at the end, or they're gonna that's gonna come back into play. And no, you're I didn't. Very good at catching that. I didn't see that at all. Did you notice that? You know the thing that they actually killed him with at the end. Did you see that earlier in the movie at the junkyard and think that that was gonna come back at the end? And, and I didn't even see it. Okay, she didn't they see. They do it. use it. They do use it, but I mean, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. Think, I didn't put the the like. Uh, oh, that's coming back into play. Didn't like even I, say, my, I think they did it perfectly. That's why I was I was telling Frankie when we were watching. That's why she said the water. I said I hope they don't just dump him in the water because I because I saw him on top of the thing chained up. I thought they were gonna pull like a fluffy from Creep Show and just like throw him in the water even though we're dead. I'm like then then we know he's gonna come back because li- believe it or not. <laughs> Carrie like, said the good, but the, they held hands. She started laughing again like uh, daughter and grandmother. Oh, and she goes, "What are they gonna do? Thelma and Louise it off the cliff?" <laughs> <laughs> So imagine that thing. Woo! Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. That, I thought that for a second too. But no, honestly, she, the water, because I heard people that, that saw it on Wednesday night, even before us, saying that, well, it kind of, I don't know why they call That's, it ends. It kind of left it open for uh, another one to be made. I'm thinking, so I'm at the movies. I'm looking for some type of loophole. So that's why I thought the of that. Ma- the mask being out on the counter is the only thing. Who cares about, about the mask being yeah. on the counter? has the mask. The mask of Michael Myers. There's the next fan film. Yeah, the mask of Michael Myers, part part whatever, part fourteen. <laughs> Amazing. So so you did like it though, ultimately. Yeah, it was pretty good. There you go. Because she hasn't really been a fan of the whole idea of reboots and all that other stuff. She just likes them to stay where they are, and you know, it's weird. So because people talk about people her age, and they always complain about this. All it, it, it must be it must be a Generation Z person that's complaining about this. It must be a Gen Z Generation person Dave Z. Yeah, Generation Daisy complaining about this. But every time I talk to her, she doesn't talk like they make they make her generation out to be like the worst. Like I always see it. Dawson liked it too. She liked it. I, I don't think she loved it, but she liked it. And they're what a year apart, I believe. Jocelyn's seventeen. Yeah, they're a year apart, and his daughter liked yeah. it too. So, but and they always make them out to be it. the worst. I don't think she loved it either. But um, what would you what would you uh, what would Frances- Francesca uh, rate it? Okay, what would you rate it? Halloween ends between one and ten. I feel like it'd be like a. Let me think. Maybe like a, a eight or a nine out of ten. I thought it was wow, really cool. that's pretty high. Okay. Well, that's pretty high. Okay. Where would you put the original yeah. Halloween? That, that's a 10. I love she yes! gave it a 10 on the show. I remember that. Oh, did she? You, okay. you guys talked about it when you when we used to have the segment, and I think at the time it was like the ten year old, the ten year old reviewer, the eleven year old reviewer, or something like that. Yeah, the ten year old so horror fan initially. Was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Eight's a good rating. Though. Eight or nine. Now I'm Eight's glad you enjoyed it. Liked it that much. That's cool. Yeah. You know. Awesome. And she's gonna watch Hellraiser. She's never seen Hellraiser. I'm gonna show her the original and the remake. We just haven't had time to get to it, but we'll do that next. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. I know you got stuff to do. I just wanted to get your opinion on the air. Take care. Say bye. See, oh, Christian says goodbye. Tell him I said goodbye. What'd you say, honey? I said, tell him I said bye. No, no, no. I heard he can hear you. Um, but when you said something before that. <laughs> about what? The, how I changed my mind. You, oh, did you change your mind? No, not about Halloween, but about thinking that all reboots, not all reboots are bad. Because, like, I like Doctor Sleep. Like, that was a good reboot of a... The Shining. By well, that was just a sequel, right? But, well, yeah. But you like the Texas Chainsaw movie, the reboot? You said you liked the the, the new one as much as you did the original. Yeah, I think almost. it just matters who directs it and stuff. Like, if it's, like, the same director and, like, part of the same cast, it's going to be good. But if it's, like, a different, like, base, like, movie with, like, like the same title with, like, a different story, then that's not, like, a good reboot. Well, some are and some are. I'm going to show you some when the time is right. But... It's all different. You never know. But it's cool. Well, thank you. I know you got stuff to do, so. I have to finish an essay. Oh, so finish I an was, essay. Oh, yeah. boy, oh, boy. Well, it never ends. Yeah. All right. I, I don't miss those days. Uh, the I, I So I went and watched the uh, theatrical cut of Rob Zombie's Halloween and then watched the unrated cut. And really, there's not a the, the big both. difference. 
the the big difference is that escape scene. I know. That's the that's the difference. It's it's either the theatrical traditional, which is actually my preferred, or there's the the rape escape, which is the director's cut. Uh, and then there's one additional scene in the unrated version, one or two extended or additional. And then there's still the whole lineup of, of scenes that were cut out of the movie or that were reshot or, or refilmed. Because yep. I remember if we've talked about it on the show before that there was a work print I edition it. of it, which is, and I used to have it because, and it has some scenes in different orders or sequences or alternate and Loomis gets killed versions. Yeah. So, and then the alternate ending. Yeah. That, so yeah, I, it's, it's kind of like, I, again, there's, there's an argument to be said for both. The, the bigger difference is our, the second one, First, the theatrical versus the the Rob Zombie cut. And I'm watching the theatrical of that one right now, and I'm going to watch the uncut version because I've never watched them back to back, and that's where ah. you see the massive differences. And in that in that regard, it's still a great. I think I'll I'll save total judgment for later, but I think once again, my argument would be that the best cut is a combination of the two. But I think the right. director's cut's the one that introduces has all those beautiful shots of her. Remember when she when um Eddie gets killed. Uh, oh, Daniel Harris, and then they yeah, show man. all that footage. I'm pretty yes. sure that's only in the director's cut and not the theatrical. Oh. And that gives that is the one of the best parts of the movie. Yeah, in my man. Opinion. And of course, it has the director's cut as Michael talk at the end or say die or whatever, and then yeah, the theatrical does not. Those are the things I remember off the off the top. But I'll I'll uh, I, I've See never done again. it back to back. <laughs> H2, and I thought that bum was going to be Michael on Halloween Ends. I thought so, too. I thought That so would have been fine. Even when the guy said, I'm Michael Myers, I had to look it up to see if he was really Michael Myers, and someone else took his took the mask because he was weak, and he went in there, and the guy the guy's just a bum that talked. Because to me, and I people don't want to hear it, but to me, that I want, if it goes a realistic route, I don't care. In real life, that would happen. Michael Myers, where is he going to go? Of course he's going to become a bum. Where can he go? He's not. He's a wanted man. He'll get picked up and go back to freaking to Smith Grove. He doesn't want to do that. He's got to hide out. He's got to do something, which is what what to me why it worked in H two and why it worked here. To me, that's realistic. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I just. I guess people are mad because I mean we've had this in all our movies in the past, and so maybe they thought it was another part that was weak would have been the fact that what he's just been hanging out in the sewer for four years. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. he's been. He but goes there to killing. sleep. There's people you see missing signs too, uh, yes. like throughout the movie that I'm assuming means that there's been some, some death or or maybe they're alluding to it or there's still some threat and he's got to eat and he's obviously eating dog and and of everything course. else. <laughs> they should have missing dogs. See that that they dropped the ball there. There should have been uh, missing on a, on dog a, posters on the pole. On a thing of uh, milk. <laughs> yeah, because that's Glass. what he eats. <laughs> Why not missing dogs? <laughs> Maybe, uh, see, there's the answer. Why doesn't he Cujo. kill that bum? The reason he doesn't kill that bum is that's how he gets food. They're symbiote mm. to each other. He protects the bum, and the bum gets him fed. How's that for an answer? Mm. Just saying. Why is that, that? That's in the realm of possibilities. I can excuse it. That's fine with me. But why did he want that mask so much? I think he, because he said that that's what He makes, thinks it brings power. Michael Myers, yeah, exactly. And maybe it does. Maybe there's something to it. But again, Michael can only kill so much because he's weak. So he gets enough strength to go up and kill. Then he freaking goes back for a while and he just – but you see that he starts doing that shaky thing. After after Corey makes him kill the first time, he's like, finish it, finish it. And when he does, you see that Michael does all this shaky shit. He's like getting like – you know what I mean? Like something's going on. Like, he's getting he's getting energized. And then he comes back. and, and the, But then later on he comes back <laughs> and then he has that fight with Corey and Corey, you know – he holds his own against him, and then he gets the mask, and he takes off. And I think people have a problem with that, saying that, you know, it was a bastardation of Michael Myers. It's not. It's nowhere near as bad as what, like, freaking Busta Rhymes did. Yeah. And, again, it's explained here. He's not 100%. And when Busta Rhymes did it, he was 100%. He was Michael Myers. What if just, they had Busta Rhymes as the DJ, as the actor for the DJ? That, that would have been amazing. Busta. I think that would have been, he said his lines. That been cool. He did say one or two like, of his lines. So yeah. I'm like, well, yeah. That would have been something. People would have been pissed off, I think. <laughs> just because it was Buster Ryan would just take them. Well, they were pissed off anyway. They may as well. Yeah. They may as well yeah, just yeah, troll exactly. Go 100%. Yeah. <laughs> he should have done everything. H2, Resurrection, and freaking uh, and Halloween 3. Just to freaking troll everybody. 
That would have been great. Wow. So have you been watching a bunch of other things or no? Because I tell you, for me, my uh, my year, I'm going to give you my numbers real quick on what I'm doing for uh, for 2022. This is what this is how many I've watched. Let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 37 movies right now. And I everything stands the same. 37 movies and I have three movies that are a 6.5 and those are my my lowest three. <laughs> and that is it. Everything else has been a 7 or better. I'm having oh, a really good year. I uh I have 78 films watched. Holy shit. Wow. 78 films. But I, I've been very happy with the year. I've watched some ship readers, as I mentioned. Before. Oh, yeah. That was by choice. Yeah. Uh, maybe not by choice, but I, at one point at the beginning, I was like, I'm going to try to watch every release that comes out. And then I realized that that <sighs> is not always easy to do. And it. it gets bad. And sometimes I don't like you're like, I'm not paying for this. So I'll watch what's on Shutter. I'll watch what's on on uh, Netflix and Prime and, and whatever else I can you know, get my hands on. Uh, I saw that um, one, and again, I wasn't a big fan of it, Dave. I know. I think based on how I heard you talk about it, I believe you are a fan of it. But we're all going to the World's Fair. Yeah, I, I, I told you you wouldn't like it. I think. Yeah, it was on Hoopla. It had like two effective moments in it, but that there's an example of how to make a movie that has a decent message behind it all. How to take a movie and spread it out way longer than it should conceivably be just by having static shots. And really they're not there to do anything, but extend the pat the running time. In my opinion, in my opinion, because everything you could trim everything down and everything would still be um, like, I'm not, I'm not even saying extra scenes. I'm saying that the camera is on like this girl who's actually a great actress uh, on the girl for like 10 minutes straight. And I don't think we, there's any point to it. Really? I really See, to me, it's all a character out piece. Every shot. No, she's wow. great. She is a great. That that she's gonna have a career. She's the best part of that movie. Um, and I I liked her. And there's a couple of creepy moments in the film. Uh, sure. I thought the I thought it was gonna take a turn at the end. That I'm not sure, if, but it t- killed the message. But I'm also not always for message movies. So the f- fact that if it went the way I did, I think I would have liked the movie more. And again, I can't go into spoilers about it, but I just thought that that other person that lives in the house that is at the end, that's sort of like yes, a helper. Yes, that's I important. Maybe would have been, I thought might have been something he's not and would have gone down the the route that I would have maybe expected more as opposed well, to. Ultimately, still thinking he <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm thinking that this is a movie about two different people that have mental disorders. And that's all it is. And there's no statement. There's no anything. It's actually sad, if anything, just to show um, what could happen to some people uh, because of the it internet is sad. And, and where yeah. they could go. What with we were it. talking about earlier, being glued and and and, and right. graded this as reality, as their phones as reality constantly. I will get on here and I'll get depressed in like two seconds just by that. Th- and I'm not saying that the, the res- reviews of Halloween ends is is what's doing it, but it's just the negative. It's like it's, it's just like, yes. Just a bunch of negative shit shooting yes. back at me. And I'm just like, I agree. holy fuck. It doesn't matter what the weight is on it. It's just whether it's politics, whether it's movies, whether it's right. it, some of it's it's just sh- stupid shit. I just like, but it's all negative for the well, most that's part. Why. And, then, like, I, and then the the positive sometimes is faux positive. It's just it's like it's almost like <laughs> it's bullshit. So it's just like, oh, it, 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 this is why kids we were talking earlier kids really shouldn't be allowed to have these i think i think well I, i'm starting to, to to stand on that dude and again i know it's just up to us as parents to say hey set limits easier yep. said than done we try but there's always ways around it and everything else i have controls so, here when things are going wrong we have we can yeah. take restrictions on and off we have the we have yeah, the power of course. you know we what i mean too. so we that helps we can see screen time and everything Right, um, and we do, and that's the way things work. If we see things, that that's just the way it is. So we do stay on top of that, which is one good thing. But here's the thing. I don't post anything, and you've seen this. I won't post anything negative. I just won't. Everything I, 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 I will put up is positive or neutral. It's just an observation, but it's never anything negative. And I refuse to say anything negative unless – Unless somebody asks my opinion on something and it happened, my response happens to be, I didn't like the movie. Yes, but you will never see me go to a movie. If I think the movie sucks, I'm not going to come home and announce it to the world that I think this movie sucks. However, if I go out to a movie and it blows me away, 
I'll come back and I'll say, check it. But honestly, I really don't anymore because of podcasts. Because I, I usually save my thoughts oh. for for podcasts. I mean, why not? Every anybody can do that. But I I have the luxury to be able to have people listening to me. So why not? Why not do it? Why not make you know, give them a reason to listen? Yeah. You know. Well, I so, told you about Sissy. Sissy was on Shutter. That was a cool slasher that. movie. Um, mm-hmm. I also talked about Deadstream, which was a standout to me. The reason I, I'm shocked you're not you haven't watched it is it's a found footage movie. So I, I thought it would be Buddy, a double a double whammy for you in a good I way. Our, I haven't watched our Geno's movie yet. I haven't watched yeah. in the new um, WNUF. I haven't watched um, the Black Phone. I haven't watched um, what's the other one um, that everyone loves that was on Shutter. The Sadness. I haven't watched the other yeah. found footage that's on Netflix that people like. I think it's an Asian found footage. Oh, uh, I caught it, up, man. I had to catch up. I was starting to feel – I started back in, in August. I started feeling like I was drowning in new mm. releases that I hadn't watched yet. I know it sounds – again, we talk at extremes here. But, I mean, so I'm like, I got to get I gotta get on these. And I thought I thought I was going right. to end up with, like, you know, like 60 movies maybe. But now it looks like I'm going to trend to what seems to be – my my standard, which is like is between ninety and a hundred and something, like a hundred and a hundred, a hundred and five. That seems to be where I've been landing in the last few years. So I assume that's where I'll be at the end of the year, considering it's only mid October and we got two and well, a half months. I'll end up going over, but again, I, I saved a lot for the end because I know just in case I had a bad year, I wanted to end it strong. But now I think I'm gonna get. I've been I've been wrapped up in this 1980 stuff too, so I've been doing that. But I'm going to start doing more. The thing is, I'm going to tell you what's on my watch list right now. This is for these year. I, well, let's see. Werewolf by Night. I haven't seen that. Keeping it's Company. Short. Okay. Keeping Company, The Seance, UMMA, U-M-M-A, uh, Salome, S-A-L-O-U-M, um, Sweetie, You Won't Believe It, On I've The Third seen that, Day. I've seen all the others. On the, what go. was it? On The Third Day? On The Third Day, yeah. Um, Dark Glasses, of course. The Harbinger. Um, which I don't think anybody has it yet, but I may have it in my MB. I don't know. I got to go look. Deadstream, of course. The Turn of the Screw. I'm not even sure it's, it's out yet. Tethered. Uh, what else? The Hunted. The Hunted. Jesus. 2014. Wait a minute. There's a reason <laughs> this is here. I don't know why that's there. It must be a re- Maybe it's a movie I never saw that I heard someone mention on a podcast. So disregard that. Wormwood Apocalypse, which I may or may not get to. The Last Thing Mary Saw. Uh, when I consume you, I'm probably not going to watch because I, but uh, I was mildly interested. Um, the passenger, uh, virus 32, you are not my mother, suicide for beginners, bodies, 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 the righteous, a banquet, uh, exorcism of God, maybe, maybe not. Holy shit, you got a lot Malouk. more that were not on my list. M O L O C H. Yeah, that's on Shutter. Okay, the sadness I've said. Um, Venice a group of Spanish tourists in Venice. Yeah. Um, Mayday. Mayday. Wait, is that horror? Hold on. Yeah, I guess it's not out yet. Or well, either way, Mayday, the grandmother, also known as um, uh, Abuela, La Abuela. Um, Let the wrong one in. Sissy, sleep. The black phone. I heard sleep is horrible. I had sleep on my list Hold to on. watch. Let's see. Oh, man, I got, okay, I got to tell you, I've only had one, two, three, four, I have six people that have seen it on my letterbox. The lowest rating is three and a half. Everybody else is four or higher. Sleep. Interesting. Yep. It has a 3.1 overall on freaking, it's a four movie, also known as Schlaff. I don't know, but <laughs> it's out there, so that's why it's there. Uh, we'll see. Midnight? Is that the one? I don't know. Either way, Midnight, it's called. It's an Asian movie. Nocturna, Nocturna, the great old man's night. Yeah, that's the one um, I was talking about a couple episodes ago. Okay, that's why it's there. The Survivalist, I don't know why it's there. It's not new. Oh, Mia, it's a Mia Goth movie I haven't seen. I gotta, I gotta watch it. Okay, um, Studio Six Six Six, which I may or may not watch because I've heard everybody saw it and nobody hates it, but no one loves it either. So I just it, it, it's fun. It's fun. If I was fifteen, it would have been my favorite movie type thing. It's wow. got a, a, one of the best kills of the year, and it's mm. it's gory, but it's stupid. It's 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 like you know a modern answer to like Evil Dead or something like that. Like I mean, I, again, mm. that might be giving it way more credit than it's worth. It's right. I mean, it's just it's really like silly, gory. Oh, well, not as silly maybe. as trauma, but maybe, but, but better yeah. made. It's like a real movie too. But I think it, it, I actually thought the, the, 
Dave Grohl does the best job acting of the whole group. The rest of the group oh, that's cool. Act, it saved the boy, it saved their life. But it's fun. It's not. I don't know if it will make it. It might make a honorable mention because it does have the best one of the best kills of the year. One of the best. Okay. But most of the cool. ones you mentioned, there's some ones that I liked out of those those shutter ones. But like I said, they're all there's a lot of like just good. Like it was good. I check it. Like the turnout was good. Um, mm-hmm. Mulak or whatever the uh, uh, good. Malok. That might have been the, the Malok best. Malok. <laughs> yeah, that might have been the best one. Uh, Virus thirty two. I liked the sadness. I liked. I mean, there's like a lot of good ones. Like, do you have Orphan First Kill? Have you watched it? I've seen it. I saw it right when it came out. Okay. And I liked it. I liked it. I liked it too. I actually liked it better than the first one. I think I, that was a Not that was better, one of the bigger it. surprises to me this year. I was shocked. No, was good. How much I enjoyed that one. I it was, was cool. really shocked. Yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, here's some more. Incantation. I think that's the one that's on Netflix. That's the found footage. The yeah. Asian found footage. Okay. Incantation. Yeah. High Life. Hold on. 2018. No, 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 no. Mia Goth. Sorry. I just had to complete my Mia stuff that wasn't horror. It's just there. Um, Smile. May or may not see. We'll see. It's it's still newer and I haven't got a lot of ratings back yet. I don't know. If but you maybe. haven't seen it in the theater, I, should, I think it's going to be out before Won't the be end long. of the year. Yeah. Shit. Uh, Suicide Shame. Forest Village. Which I absolutely will see because it, it's Shimizu, so I'm gonna watch it despite the ratings. Um, Emma, no, that's that's Mia, and it, not is it just Mia? It's 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 Mia and Anya Taylor Joy, so I'm definitely want to see that. But that's another thing. I dream of Psycho Pomp. Uh, no, I'm not gonna see that movie. I'm gonna remove it right now. But it was there for a reason. But no, and that's it. So, but I'm gonna remove this Psycho Pomp movie. Two people have well, saw it. I got a half rating and two two stars. That's it. Why was it there in the first place? I don't know why. Weird. Here are the ones that I have on my list to watch. I'm sure it's going to change uh, or evolve because what ends up happening is Shudder surprises me every week with another movie, it seems. <laughs> That's new. I know. Uh, oh, Josiah. But, but, I got to see Josiah still, too. Oh, what Josiah saw? Yeah. So you said to watch ones, it, right? Well, it's. How do I word it? It's again, it's one of those movies that are you're like, is this horror? Is it horror enough? It's a Does well made movie. There's a couple mm-hmm. of good parts to it, uh, for sure. I was just surprised it was a shutter original or shutter exclusive mm. and it's it, and it it's it, it I I it's recommended, but it's I don't know how horror it is. Okay, is it thriller enough? Yep. I think okay. so. I think there's I enough of a, a story that you'll be intrigued by. And I said there's a really well directed scene like sort of in the middle or, or that leads into the third act that I thought was really well done. But my, oh. my short list of movies to watch are crimes of the future, Pearl barbarian smile bones and all, and the menu. Those are the, those are the ones that are officially on my, I want to see before the end of the year. I think all of those are out in some form or another, whether it be in the theater or to stream bones and all comes out next month. And I believe the menu as well. Mm. Well, and then, like I've already seen, those are officially, but then whatever comes out in Shutter that, you know, I see. And then the last few watches have been like I, uh, Unhuman, or uh, Orphan First Kill, uh, We're All Going to the World's Fair, The Hellraiser Death Stream, uh, Holy Blood, Mr. Uh-huh. Holloman's, or Harrigan's Phone, excuse me, um, Werewolf at Night, Grim Cuddy, Old People, and Halloween Ends. Grim Cuddy, I know I'm skipping. Oh, did you see yep. it? Yep. Skip it. Yeah, I, I added it for a second, and then I looked the next Skip day. Skip it. Because here's what happened. Because I'm on my. I want to see Evil Gru chasing people around. Uh, uh, I will say this: good idea. I like the idea of it. Again, it's about like the phone and and and, and, and social and 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 it has that aspect to it. But mm-hmm. and the killer could have been scary if they showed less of it. If they took uh-huh. a Elm Street route. There you if they go. went the Nightmare on Elm Street route. I actually think, as I was watching it, you're talking about how to reboot Nightmare on Elm Street. This could have possibly been it. And before people think I'm crazy, I'm talking about if you don't see that damn killer, it's put Freddy in place of Grim Cuddy and put him in less of the goddamn movie. Hmm. The idea and premise might have actually been better. Now, when you see Grim Cuddy at the, initially, I think in the first scene, he actually looks kind of scary. But they just show him way too much, and he just looks like, like he. I know he's supposed to be this this crazy meme, horror meme, but that's what he looks like. Like I, I made a joke that he looks like Psycho Gru, 
Gru being the character from <laughs> that uh, thing? Despicable Avengers Me. or whatever it no, is. Despicable Me guy. Oh, that's like, Gru. I was thinking Gru. of something. Maybe there's another oh, Groot. guy called. I am Groot. Uh, Groot. 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 Yeah, I don't or whatever know. the fuck whatever is. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Okay. No. Uh, Despicable Me Gru. That's what he looks like. Wait, <laughs> so who's Gru? The lead guy with the long nose? Yeah. The guy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> That's funny. That's nothing scary about that. Oh no. shit. No, no, and they show him way too much. And it, so like that, it just it just falls apart. It just really falls apart into a really messy, not so great film at all. Yeah. Well unfortunately. This this is what I see every day, okay? This is my MB. So every day new movies just pop up. So right yeah. I, I get new I, I find about new horror movies like as soon as they're released. The accursed old man. Um, bitch ass. Look, there's a movie called Bitch Ass. Look at that I know. cover. I saw that too. All that says to me is avoid. Watson wants to watch it. Okay, I don't know. Um, I, the Curse of Something, She Will, Rosalind, Night of the Something Scared. Um, so every time a movie, I don't even have to look anymore. Other people are on top of this that that put in requests for you know for the MB. So they just pop up every day. So every day I go and I look, like Bitch Ass, for example. That movie <laughs> popped up. First thing I did. I took that title, I went over to IMDb, I looked it up, and I went over to freaking, what do you call it, Letterboxd, and I decided within two minutes, this is a movie I'm never going to watch. But that's what I do with everything. So lucky for me to have this MB that these movies just drop there. It's like having every, well, it, basically, that's what it is. It's like having every streaming service, and these movies, any new horror movie that comes out, boom, it just pops up. So that's how I've been finding out about them. So like some of the movies I find out, you know what I mean? I, I put them up there. Like some that are in my watch list, they have no official release date, but sometimes they're here. Like I've had dark glasses for like freaking two months now or black glasses, whatever the hell it's called. And I've had, what do you call for a month now? The WNUF follow-up, the scary, whatever the hell it's called, scary Halloween tape. So somehow some of these movies, freaking Terrifier 2 hasn't come there yet. But for whatever reason, MB just gets these things, you know, because I guess they just go search different places and they post them up. So there I am. I have access to it all. So, you know, lots of stuff well, there. No, I mean, the that's I remember having the, when we had uh, uh, IPTV or whatever for a bit. My right. problem with it is I never and it was it was like that. But my problem with it is it wasn't consistent. Like I, mm. I, I was like, this is just not working. And I just like I, I if I'm going into something, I need it to work. So like when you when you have Shutter, when you have Netflix, when you have the only I'm thing Shutter needs Shutter. to do, and I brought it up before, is they need to put a download option so I can watch offline. And I'm I don't know why they haven't done that because even AMC Plus has a download option. So if you mm. I don't know why they haven't op, uh, offered this for Shutter, and that's the only complaint I could have at Shutter. Oh, I have huge it. complaints. I got a big big bone to pick with fucking Shutter right now. Let what me up? tell you that, dude. All of a sudden, everything went to shit with the app on my TV, right? And I, 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 I deleted it. I reinstalled it. It all started with this. All of a sudden, the captions started getting minuscule, like so small that I'm, when I tell you minuscule and small, believe it. Like I have my glasses and I can see them, but they are the tiniest things you're going to see on the screen. So for whatever reason, the subtitles are microscopic now. Right. So I can barely even see them, but I can still see them, but it's a big pain in the ass. So I wrote to them. They can't figure out why, blah, blah, blah. So now that's one problem. Now, every fucking time I sign into Shutter on my on my TV, it makes me go online and says can't be some, some It says there's an issue and I have to link my TV with a code every fucking time I do it. It won't let me log in. It won't accept the pet. It's just been one thing after another. And the worst part is this about a month ago. I got the payment. I paid for the whole year because that's how I do it. I'm grandfathered in with yeah, the yeah. old price. So now I'm stuck with Shutter. But now they're not fixing my problems. And I don't have time to get into details with them with the emails all the time as to what's going on. Hey, but And I've refund? tried it. Huh? Can you just say I want a refund? I can't. This is not And working. just not have Shutter anymore? Well, I don't want to miss well, out I mean, on some things. Well, don't, I don't want to. You've been blowing MB. Like it's your, I know, but it's like balls, leaves balls over. Her and like, <laughs> but MB doesn't or have, or whatever your friends do. <laughs> MB doesn't have like that new thing that just came out. They had 101 scariest moments and shit like that. There's certain things that are on there that I want to see. Mostly right. doc. I guess I could add them to the MB if I, if I go Except there. A lot of those movies you're talking about are foreign films. So if you need subtitles to actually understand what they're saying, 
some of them are dubbed, but some of them I think are 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 subtitled. And so if you, I know you watch subtitles with everything, but specifically those, if of course they're in a foreign language, you're going to need fucking subtitles that you could read. Dude, I watched freaking Santa Sangre on it and freaking the subtitles are souls and I can't understand half that's coming out of their mouth. So I, I definitely need them. But let, the last time I talked to Shudder, yeah, see, I don't even fucking know. I had a correspondence with them and I was so busy. Yeah, my ticket is resolved. Yeah, sure it is. 9-11, <laughs> I love that. Resolved on their end, but no resolution for you. <laughs> this is what it says. We hope your issue has been resolved, but if it hasn't, please respond to this email so that we can help. I just haven't had time. I talked to them. I corresponded a couple of times. And so it's on you. It's a fucking, you know, well, I just don't have the time to, to fucking get into hey. it and describe everything again and again. I just happened to catch this in the background. I don't know why. I did put this here, but I got this too. So now I've got both. I've got this because, you know, it's out of print in, well, I think both versions. And on eBay, they, they're they selling the Blu-ray versions now even ridiculously the dawn of the dead deluxe they're selling them at ridiculous prices so i found one it was a really good price like oh like, wow as good as i could get so i remember i got the 4k so the four disc 4k set box set of, of the dawn of the dead but because it's one of my favorite movies i'm like there's no way i'm not getting this deluxe version and since i got it cheap i grabbed it and it is it's fucking pretty sweet man so, I mean, I'm not uh, going to, it's because it has a soundtrack in it. Uh -huh. So, it's got the soundtracks and it's got the books. I want it for the soundtracks of books because I got the movies now in 4K. So, I the best of both worlds. I said I was going to do it. And you know what? I paid, if I add up what I paid for this with shipping and the actual 4K one with shipping, I think it was in and around the same price as what they were trying to sell this in the 4K was initially. Brand really? New. Like out of the gate, or if anything, I paid wow. a little bit more. I may have paid a little bit more. I think I paid no questions. I think I paid 150 taxes in for both. Mm -hmm. For both. For, for both. both? This set, for this set, and oh, initially wow. when they released the 4K version, which is just the 4K set, uh, for mm. the four disc set in 4K. The I think 150. I, I don't even believe I'm off on that by much. Uh, 150 tax and shipping in. So. <sighs> I like I think I lucked out, but I'm happy to have this. And I gotta tell you, it should be no surprise because I've mentioned this movie before. It was very difficult. I was flipping back and forth, man, between my number one and number two horror movie of all time. Oh. And this was, you know, because I'll just tell everybody uh that this came in at number two. Uh it's always been a flip flop between them, I feel. Well. And no, my number one's not video right? drone. A lot of people seem to think it is. I love video drone, it's up there. It's up there. I love Psycho. Everything's up there. Yeah, I but thought Psycho was going to be your number one. This and the it was. I, I had Psycho as my number one for a while. I said, yeah, I, I, yeah. And I said, you know what? I I still when I when I think back at it, if I have the Desert Island, it the Thing, and Dawn of the Dead. There you go. Awesome. I don't care if I spoiled it because again, I'm one hey. person. I'm one person in the point system, and so those are my two. And anybody knows it. Knew they were always in my top four well. anyway. <laughs> They're heavy hitters, that's for sure. I'll tell you what, man. You told me about that shelf factory sale, and I freaking made the most of it. And I end up spending, and I never do, but I mean, the prices were so low. I, I know. I ended up spending like $99. But I mean, it's... but it comes out four times, $24 payments. I do the PayPal. Oh, yeah, you guys, you guys could do the payment thing. So yeah. I did the over 100. I had, I put everything in. I just said, let me just look at what this is going to come out to. And again, mm -hmm. it was American dollars. And I think it was like 300 and something. I'm like, nope. <laughs> And plus shipping and whatever. I'm like, no, that's way too much. I can't justify it. That I, I don't really have that dis like that much disposable all at once. Like I've got to limit it, especially with our fucking movies. You know what I mean? I love them, but I got to limit. You got to just limit it again. If I you want to ship to my house anytime. I, I know I should have, but because I just had bought this too. And I'm like, ah, I got to like, you know, spread it out. But I didn't spend. It was, I think, 130 bucks shipping. And that, that was American. So it came out to about. 175 or 180 bucks Canadian. So still, still good with the jump up. But I mean, so I got that shirt that they were giving. Not that I needed the shirt, but I got one of those shirts because they that was they still oh. I, they had if you spent over 100 bucks you got a shirt for free. Really? Their wow. 10th anniversary Scream Factory shirt. So I got I that. Know. I got so I've got the 4Ks. I told you I got the ones that I didn't have. Halloween three, Halloween five, and 4K. Uh, Prince of Darkness, uh, and um, oh my God. Um, they live 4k 
There you go. Uh, April Fool's Day, and I can't remember. There was one or two other ones that I hadn't had yet. Oh, uh, ah. Dead Ringers, uh, uh, Dead Zone. Uh, uh, again, I know that there there's going to be 4K of coming out of all these again, but I didn't care because I just said, you know what? When I look at my Blu-ray sometimes, I'm like, this is amazing. The quality is amazing. I'm watching it on my 4K player. Well, if it's upscaling it, I don't know. The quality is awesome yeah. on some of these that I don't need to worry about 4K for everything. Agreed. So I'm I'm gonna even even Halloween four, three and five because I got the Halloween three steelbook, which is a 4K scan, and mm -hmm. I've got the Halloween five Blu-ray. I was really hesitant about getting them, but they put them down to like 19 bucks. America. I'm like, okay, I mean 25 bucks Canadian. Why not? Okay, I'll, yeah. do, I'll do it for those. So oh. I agree. I, Shocktober, that's the only Shocktober I'll accept. Is <laughs> ah, that right. sale? <laughs> well, I, here's what I got. I, I also, I did get the Dead Zone because it was sixteen forty nine. dollars So I got that. I got Serial Mom for, for twelve oh, fifty. which, I like dude, that John Waters film. Yeah, it's a fun movie. I, Fuck, dude, I saw for the first time this year because the 22 shots when we did the show for the year. And I fuck, I said, this is going to be a new favorite in my household. I can tell you right now, we're all going to watch it. My wife and daughter are both going to love it. It's our humor. Um, Finally, I got the Krampus freaking, the naughty cut because it was oh, on yeah, sale. I, I got that. I haven't watched it yet because I went for Christmas. Yep. But, there you uh, go. Cat People was only 11 49 it's a blind buy. I've never fucking seen it, but I I, I think it's good from everything I've heard. I think it's something price. I'd like. So yeah. I'm mean, for that price, yeah. yeah Behind the mask on Blu-ray, I didn't have I, it. I had that in the list. You know? I had yeah. that in the list, like just to an have an alligator, an oh, alligator 4K. 4K. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to do it. I, I'm I'm kicking myself because I didn't get Halloween, um, Halloween 78 because it was 1850, and I thought because they had it so low that Prime was gonna have it low too. Now when I made these purchases here, so that it was gonna be a holdup in um. In shipping, and still, I ordered it like freaking. I don't know uh, how long. Same with ago. me, man. Ten four, and they haven't shipped it yet. Well, I want Halloween to be here on October thirty first because I want to watch it. So I said, okay, I won't buy it here just to be safe. I'll go. I'll go to Prime because it's probably going to be just as low there because that's what they usually do when there's sales, like the Criterion sale. When there's a Criterion sale, right on Criterion, yeah, they match it on Prime. So I thought because this is the sale, they're going to match it on Prime. Nope, it's freaking still twenty five dollars on Prime, and the other ones, yeah. like, dude, the, the 4Ks, they're like thirty two dollars and shit so, for Halloween well, three and in, in Canada, I have them, but thirty two ninety nine was the, the standard rate now, and then <sighs> what for some reason three and five, so I bought the other ones back in the summer because uh, it was my birthday and I, I grabbed them for my whatever for, for just to get them, and then I didn't get three and five because I I was like. Mm, Five, I already have on Blu-ray, like I just said, and three, I had yeah. that steelbook. And I'm like, oh, I got to get them. And th those were the two that went out and then came out with a, either were out of stock on the Canadian site or exorbitant, like prices, like that price jumped right up. That's the one thing about Prime, it's like gas. I, I've made the joke before, it could be, it could go down to twenty three ninety nine for a day. And if right. you don't jump on it, it could jump up to 70 bucks. Cloak and Dagger, one of my favorite childhood movies, they, Vin, Vin, uh, Vinegar Syndrome, released a 4K of it. Well, I got to get uh -huh. it. It dropped down to 25 bucks. I didn't grab it or something like that. It went up to 75 bucks. And now, now it's come down to oh. back to back to normal because it was out of stock or hard, whatever. It was ridiculous or not out of stock, but limited so it right up. still like you gotta be kidding me that's what i hate amazon for they're great for certain things but you really if if you see it drop down to something that doesn't look like it should be that low right not it. <laughs> of course and this is what i do every day i have my wish list and i have movies on it like the krampus was on there you know what i mean so and every day i check like there's some ones I'm waiting. Like right now the Poltergeist 4K, which I am eventually gonna have to break down and buy because it's Poltergeist and it's 4K. It's 26 still. Breaking the waves, I'm never gonna get it. It's 35 dollars on Blu-ray Criterion. Maybe one of Criterion. Days and Confused, 28 dollars. Never gonna get it. Star Wars Force Awakens. That is the only one I don't have in 4K of the modern ones. And I got ganked twice. I bought it at stores ganked. used because the box looks like a 4k box because it's black. So I thought I was buying the 4k. So I have it twice bought and they're both Blu-rays. I got freaking ganked by, uh, that store, uh, that went out of business family, uh, video. Oh, video. Yeah. You could do, if you look at it, it's a black box. It looks like it's a fucking 4k. So I thought I, so when I bought it the second time, I was like, Oh no, it's still, it's still a blue son See, of a bitch. So we, Goonies is cheap though. Uh, the Goonies now. is another one. I don't know how. Scream. That's a good copy, though. I have Scream. 
right now. Oh, wow. um, Harry Potter 105, it's never going to drop. Halloween, $24. Because I saw that 1850, I can't fucking do it. <laughs> it's going to drive me mad yeah. this whole month. You're like me, man. If I saw it, that's why I, I cloak a day. Yeah. If I don't see go down to that twenty dollar range again, I'm like at some point I'm gonna pull the trigger. I'm gonna be weak because that one I it's it just again. Oh, there I'm it is. Serving four K now. And there you go. Look at that. Well, that's an American, so that means thirty three bucks, thirty four bucks for me. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, that's too much. Which is fine. It's still. I mean, it's all relative. I mean, I used to spend way more. Again, here, here comes the Laserdisc story, everybody. <laughs> ah. But back in the day, a Laserdisc, because they used to be, like, if you remember, when you went to buy videos, if you went to buy VHS, you would luck out. Back in there, if you went to Sam the Record Man in Toronto or whatever like that, they would be sometimes $69.99, $59.99, $39.99. Typically, $29.99 was what you were spending. You were lucky out if you found one at $24 or $19.99. That was a luck out. You were spending a lot for them. So you really wanted, you. it was like one of the, I have to have this in my collection or or whatever it may be. Same with Laserdisc. Laserdisc was typically started at $69.99 and right. went up. In Canada, anyway. Um, so you knew that it was going to be a mass. So now all these prices should feel like deals to me, but they still, they, they're they still expensive. <laughs> yeah. When you look at the I big picture. Think- because... Because back in the day, that's all we had our money. Like, I wasn't thinking of buying a house when I was a teenager or anything else. I was just thinking of, I want this in my collection. It was pretty much income was disposable. You saved a bit and the rest was disposable. Of course. And that was it. And now now that, like, as much as there's disposable income, the ratio. (laughs) Uh. The ratio actually might be the same, but it's the justification of it because there's, I've got, other responsibilities as do you so that's why we've got to justify how we do it what can and we do? sometimes even buying these like buying that twice over like i just said it, it took a lot but i'm like fuck it's my it's a movie it's a, uh, this is my passion this is our passion why not why the fuck not especially sometimes, for a favorite right sometimes i do it that's what i'm saying very not much but i do like a sale like this i do it and i still do the yeah. pain for so but there's a couple things i want like but 4k again i'm not buying all the I don't want everything on 4K only. I know. Favorites. And, but at the same respect, there's some movies that I don't want to buy on blue because I know I'm going to buy it on blue. And in a couple of months, it's going to come out on 4K. I'm not doing it. The well, guy, I, I, I almost buy the dead zone. That's it, that, verbatim. I said, I know this is coming out in a year, but that was only released last year. I think in motherfuckers, in of course. So I, I think you know it's going to be another year because they're going to milk it. They're going to milk it. But I'm like, you know what? I don't know if the, if the, I, I just said, screw it. This is such a great price. And I've got to draw the line on the scene somewhere. And I've, I've loved these Blu-rays. They're, the quality is so good. And sometimes I'm not blown away by the 4K. Sometimes right. I'm just not. I've mentioned I got to read. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes the damn, so, sometimes like the transfer is great. Like those Argento ones. The thing I thought was great. Uh, we've, we've talked about this on the show before. So right. it just depends. But I'm like, screw it. The price is great. And that's what matters. The movie is the movie. Uh, and that's what I want and the special features. And I don't give a shit about special features because usually when they do the 4K, it's just going to be on the film anyway because you don't need special features in 4K. It's just going to be the same old special features anyway. Yep. I know. So I just, I, I was know. just like, you know what? I'll take these deals because why not? Uh, so my, my, my 4K, my 4K is moving forward. I've got the list because there's a lot oh, that we just released. Good idea. But I, oh my God, I'm, I'm trying to open up the thing that I have my list on. And I've opened up every app but the one I wanted to open up. Mm-hmm. And it was, uh, it, it's still kind of a short list. But Videodrome, uh, mm-hmm. Return of the Living Dead, Army of Darkness, The Fog, Fright Night, Blowout. And Blowout, I, Blowout is even going to be, it's the exact same package. It's the Criterion Edition, which I already have. It's a 4K scan on Blu-ray. and. Uh-huh. The packaging is the exact same for Criterion, so you're just getting it in an official 4K. Now, it's one of my favorite films, but I'm like, that was even hard to justify because I'm like, it's nothing new. It's literally you're replacing what's already on your counter with this one that's officially 4K, but this is a 4K scan Blu-ray, and I think it looked great. So I was like, I don't, Blowout, Brian De Palma's Blowout. And so I'm like, and it's like 60 bucks or 50 bucks or something like that. I'm like, you know what? I've got the, I've got the criterion Blu-ray. That's a 4k scan. Maybe I'll take that one off. And then cloak and dagger. 
Poltergeist, The Lost Boys, and Black Christmas, which was just announced. So I took it off my list. Really? I was going to buy Black Christmas because it was like going to be twelve bucks or something like that. What? And I'm like, for a I, it was on, No, no, no. Uh, the oh. the Scream Factory one that I didn't get, but that was one I was oh. like, I'm going to hold off on because I guarantee they're releasing a 4K and it's coming out I think for this Christmas. Well, there you have 4K. it. And I already have Black Christmas on like freaking two different ones. I I have and, a. Scream and I also have The Shining on uh-huh. here, but I have so. The digital download I have is 4K. I got it on Blu-ray. So mm-hmm. I'm like, do I really need to get it? I mean, I kind of wanted it because I think it's got a bunch of extra features on mm-hmm. the disc. So that's what will make my determination. It's still no Exorcist, eh? The Exorcist still hasn't been announced in 4K. Son of a bitch. I know. I know. What the hell? First, we got Poltergeist. I'm happy. Where is our... But it's a start. It's Warner Brothers. Let's get our Exorcist big set next. It's got to come. And... um. Yeah, we definitely got to have it. There's something. What did you watch on Friday the Thirteenth or no? No, I, I, I was either. almost gonna make a conscious effort to watch it. I know for this show to the report on it. I think it might be the what we talk about the Halloween show. All, I'll add it to the list. All I know is that I hope they do the Friday two and four K and they reinsert the fucking footage. That's As a bonus, off. <laughs> please just the give me that and nothing else. If they did it, Paramount's releasing these, and that was a Scream Factory release. Well, oh, wait a minute. Paramount's releasing the, the, the 4K? It's not Scream? I, it wasn't Scream Factory, no. Shit. So it won't happen then. Only Scream could do it. They have the rights. Damn it. They could char. I'm not kidding. If they put out a 4K and they reinserted the footage to look as good as the footage that was reinserted to, uh, like, My Bloody Valentine or whatever else they did, I, yeah. would, I would pay $50 for that fucking thing. <laughs> and I never yeah. go over 30 for anything. Well, maybe okay. Scream will be able to do it, but uh, again, I think, uh, you know, there might be a double dip in there because I'm assuming Paramount will just release whether they do all of them individually or mm-hmm. like once a year. They're doing the Steel Books, so I'm only expecting Part Four to come out. Ne- well, actually, no, Part Four won't come out next year because it came out in '84, so they might have that year hiatus. So we might get Part Two in 4K next year, maybe even Part Three. And then in 2024, we'll get part four in a steelbook. We'll see, because they seem to be doing the 40th anniver- uh, anniversary editions in steelbook. Maybe they'll combine it. Maybe they'll just not release a 40th anniversary in Blu-ray and just do the steelbook in 2004, uh, 2024. We'll it see. would be nice. It'd be nice to have them. But the, the ones I held off on that I, I had in my bucket... Or Psycho 2, Psycho 3, Reanimator, and From Beyond. Well, From Beyond and Reanimator weren't. From From Beyond sold out, but I'm just assuming they're going to have a 4K of that coming out at some point. And then everybody, that, and all the prices that are gone crazy and everything for the Blu-ray will be back to zero because they'll have a 4K release of it with the Blu-ray in there, and I'll be very happy. Reanimator um, is not from Scream Factory, I don't believe. Uh, it's just, I figure it's going to be in 4K at some point. And in Cycle 2 and 3, I was humming and hawing because I, do I really need them in 4K? Because the the Blu-ray would be fine, but I think the, I can get them for 20 bucks each year, and I don't think they were that much different in price, and that's Wait. the reason I didn't pull the trigger. Psycho 2 is in 4K? No, that's what I was waiting for. Oh. That's why I didn't pull the trigger, but I think it was only 12 bucks. So even when I did the conversion, I'm like, I could get that for the same price here. Yeah, there was a the set they were selling. It was like the Cycle Legacy or something, and it had them all in it. And it was like really cheap. It was it was for October sale. You didn't see uh, it? No, I didn't see that one either. It comes but... with one, two, three, and, and four, I think. And it was freaking, and I think it was only 20 bucks for all of them on blue. Yeah, that's pretty good. I have I have Psycho 4, I have Psycho, four, uh, Psycho in 4K, is what I've been trying to say. And it comes, it was a double, so it was a 4K and the Blu-ray. How does right? it look? Though I think the Blu-ray looks, looks great. great. Is the 4K necessary, you think? You think it looks, it's that? Uh, well, I got it. I wanted them individual, uh, but my wife got me that the 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 first Albert Hitchcock 4K pack, which oh. is great because it had video, it had video drum. It had Vertigo, Vertigo. Psycho, The Birds, and uh, um, uh, Rear Window. And so I, I think I talked about it on the show, Psycho looked great throughout. Vertigo for the most part, looked phenomenal, but there's a couple of scenes in both Vertigo and in Rear Window that I don't think made a difference whether or not you watch it. In fact, the HDR or the the darkness level in Vertigo in a couple of scenes seemed a little lower than I would have liked it to be, but overall, the movie looked amazing. 
So it was just like two scenes that I, if I had to do a deep dive review and I don't, you know, I watch these and they're talking about black mash and this, that, and the other thing. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Either it looks good to me or it doesn't look good. (laughs) Right. I'm with you. Right. So what about the birds? I almost bought it. It was at the October sale, but I was like, well, I think it was 20. I said, do I really want, should I do it? And I ended up not getting the 4k, but I'd say the birds was my least favorite in 4k. Okay. Maybe with, because again, because of the optical effects they used, I think mm-hmm. that just accentuated the fact that they weren't as, uh, you know, yeah, it, it, I it, thought timeless, I guess, you know what I mean? But I mean, right. the, again, it came in the pack. I got both versions of there. I, I think rear window. I love that movie. I, I just think that 4k, I think it was really grainy comparatively that I was expecting, uh. but I, it was so long ago. Cause I got it right. I watched them all right. When I got the set, that I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting, but Psycho looked great. That's what I remember. Oh man, it's gonna be tough to. I'll probably just end up getting the freaking Hitchcock thing because it's probably better to do that than just to buy one movie on another sale. Well, well you, can, you can look, you can look because I mean that set right. has come down and gone up again. Like anything, it bounced up and down. At one point, where well, they had the Blu-ray version and they had the 4K, which includes both. But I think the 4K version came down to like 40 bucks for all four, and then it went back up to 90 or whatever. And then individually, the movies are anywhere from 20 to 25 bucks, roughly, each. So it just okay. depends. But if you don't want one of them, if you had no interest in getting Vertigo uh, or or whatever it may be rear window, then you can at least pick and choose them what you want. We'll pick see. I got to look, I got to look, I got, I, I'm going to, now I'm in check. I got the credit cards are paid <laughs> off. I, I, I can only do a little here. I still want to get that Midsommar. I still want to get yeah. that witch 4k. There's different things I want to get other ones. You know what I mean? It's like, well, so we'll see. Yeah. The downfall of those ones is they sell out fast. Those Zavi or if, if I'm saying the name correctly or the error. Yeah. I those, know. those ones that are on there, they sell it like that psycho, that poltergeist one's already sold out. Chris, a.k.a. Scott, got it. So you could get four, the 4K Warner Brothers one or whatever it is that whoever put it, Warner Brothers, right? You yeah, could get that Warner. one. It's the same um, thing. Yeah, it's the same. It just, you don't get all the extra, the lobby cards and everything else. I don't need that shit. Turn. But they jack up the price to get that shit. Right, I don't need that shit. I believe, as, as big of a fan as I am of Poltergeist, I, I don't care. I just want Poltergeist in 4K. I want it to look great. And if they have new special features, that'd be wonderful. But I'm not going to pay for lobby cards and a poster. I, I don't need it. But I, yeah. no, you know, if somebody wants it, I respect it. You know, booklet and all that. It's cool, but I never look at them. They just, they just sit there in a box. So I'm like, eh, yeah. I just want the movie, the movie proper. You know. Movie so proper. well, we can't forget, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have a double header. <laughs> <laughs> you know that? <laughs> you know what that's from? <laughs> a double header. Yeah, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, tonight. Why is my dog going crazy for it? We have a double header. Yep, it's from one of the two movies. Oh, it's going to be uh, Santa Sangri. It's not. It's Society. And you know why oh, it's a double, double header? header? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. It's, it's, yeah. Because of the two people that are kidnapped. The two freaking, you know, the reveal and the other and the, and the other guy that comes in. The, our lead guy. A double <laughs> header. I was going to start the show so what, with that, but I forgot. <laughs> so we, we have talked longer than usual. Uh, yeah. Let's get into but, this movie. It works, because one of the movies, there's not going to be a lot of talking. That's for sure. Well, why don't it's we start with society? Is. Since you let's, brought up the double header. Let's oh, do I, it. I zoomed in on the... Uh, okay, society, 1989. Uh, an ordinary teenage boy discovers his family is part of a gruesome orgy cult for the social elite. Yeah, I'll tell you what. You said you've seen this movie a lot. This is only my second time seeing it. The first time I saw it was maybe like six or seven years ago, and people were talking about it. Whatever it was, I decided to watch it, and I think I bought the blue blindly. Well, I watched it yeah, and liked it. You didn't like it? No, I thought I watched oh. it and I liked it, and that's where it ended. I liked it. Um, this time I enjoyed it more. So I'm glad that the vote came up the way it did in this case. And I shot myself on the foot, but we'll get to that later. But yeah, I'm glad society came up. I'm glad it came up too, because as I told you right before we started recording, is I watched this a lot as a kid when it came out. When it came out, and I was always upset because it was only the R-rated version. So although it had gore and the goo and everything like that, there were certain things missing that were showcased in most likely Gore Zone. And I believe it was a piece mm. that was called Society and Me 
written by the guy that we've referenced on the show that wrote some of these review books back there, Chaz Bolin and whatever. And he's in, he's shunted at the end scene and he's one of the shots and he's, he's in it. So he was invited on the set to be one of the shunters of society that was sucking off of the, of, of, of the guy and whatever, covered in slime and whatever. Cool. Um, and he wrote a piece on that. And when I saw his experience and I liked how he wrote, and that's why I got his review books too and whatever, that the the reality is between that and the sh- the images that they were showing, I'm like, I've got to see this movie. Because I was right in that impressionable age where I was a gore fanatic and I wanted yeah. to see everything. And it's Screaming Mad George. I'm like, oh my God. He's like creative, all, all these as I say in the title sequence, surrealistic makeup effects by Screaming Mad George. And awesome. whatever. And it was awesome, but it was always cut. So when they finally released the uncut version, I was very happy to revisit that movie again. <laughs> I don't remember it being cut, but again, I didn't rent it back in the day. I guess for whatever reason, it was just I'm one shocked. that was skipped. I know. I guess just the way the box looked and something about it just didn't seem like it was something that interest. And it may at that time not have interested me. I don't know. It's hard to say. But I know I like it now. Uh, I, I got to tell you, and, and everything that's going on in it, like, and and what they're—it's almost like what we talked about. They live last show, and what they were saying. Well, yeah. it's kind of the same thing that's happening here, and and I sure. dig all of that. I mean, it's just like he says, you know, the rich is the rich have always sucked off low class shit like you, and that's yeah. it. Fucking consumers and everybody else, and back to that conversation which we had last time. We don't need to have it now, but still. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. I love I love Yuzna's style. You know, he's got a style of his own. And watching it this time, I was a huge Yuzna fan, as I, oh, I, yeah. I said. But yeah, for sure. But now watching it, knowing the outcome, because I remembered the outcome. How could you forget? Because who could forget that climax? So you know that where <laughs> it comes, <laughs> right? But now watching it this time, <laughs> nice. And in the beginning, he's talking to the psychiatrist. You know, talking about my parents, my sister, I feel something's going to happen. He has all these suspicions, you know, in, in the psychiatrist is saying what you would expect him, you know, at your age, blah, 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 teen angst, you know, whatever, all this other stuff. And makes sense. Of course, I had my suspicions because I didn't remember everything. But later on, we get that whole Rosemary's Baby reveal scene. It's the exact same yeah. friggin' thing, even with right down to giving him the sedative. You know what I mean? But – I knew that it was all going to go someplace and I was really along for the ride. I only wish if I was going to make one critique, I only wish we would have had some effed up stuff happening along the way to yes. at least like it's a little hint. slow. Yeah. Have some, it, that, isn't it? It's slow. It's, it's just it's that build, it doesn't yeah. turn until yes. that, all that great Better. stuff until the end, it would have been nice to have, other stuff placed throughout it randomly, just like maybe one or two things they, where you saw they do, something. but not enough. Like her in the shower, right. backwards, and whatever. But I agree. Right. And I, slow right. was the wrong word, but I mean another like a shunting or something weird. Like a so he has these dream sequences. Maybe they could have been a little bit more graphic. Uh, one like you know at the first turning point or something like that. So that that's my critique. Is I one my critiques have been I don't like the soundtrack to this movie. Oh. Other than when it goes into the sort of orchestra when they're when they're shunting near the end or whatever, but I don't. The soundtrack is very generic, and I think it might have been a budget limitation. And again, I'm speaking totally out of line. I don't know, but I wish there was a bit of a budget injection here because the look of the film seems a little TV-ish. You're talking about this at the the time when we were talking about last episode. It does see this looks more like a TV movie that happens mm-hmm. to be very gory. Um, and the soundtrack is a little off. So those are my kind of critiques. Like I would have liked it to look a little bit more cinematic and, and it, it just looks like more made for TV, but which is, oh, take that for what it is, but it just that's looks that time. a little cheaper. And yeah. so I didn't like, that's the my biggest critique. And some of the things are just bizarre or weird, like, which I, I guess they're going for, but the whole, the mom, the one that, the one that tears, like likes hair and whatever, like, that whole character is bizarre to me. It doesn't and, make sense. And how That's they are a, then part of elite society. Right. She's like, it was just bizarre or she's I agree. not what the daughter is, but they never really explained that. It's right. That seems very weird. Agreed. That was, that was my, uh, I don't know what my note says exactly, but I, I don't understand that character. And, and, and I don't understand that 
because you see where it sets up and then where it ends. I'm like, why would she be there unless she used to be? They should have explained it if something was up. Yeah. Either way, they should have explained it in the, in a dialogue in the end when someone was given a speech, the mayor or the judge, whatever. They could have yeah. used her as an example, but they don't. And that's unfortunate. That doesn't make any sense to me. And I don't understand why, you know, why the guy admitted to freaking – why would he put a Ken doll in his thing and a blow up doll and all that shit? Because he was a little, a little mad at his best friend. I don't get that being a reason that to do something too. like that. Yeah. I right. Don't, it's those, weird. those are just weird movieisms that well, even when they explain that one out, you're like, why? Right. It doesn't really, I mean, some of the other sense. stuff is like, you always question, but that's movie like the tape, and they were able to manipulate the tape to make it sound different. That's fine, I Obviously, dig that. Gave it to the doctor. They gave yeah. him time. Him going up to get the car, and they were able to switch the car out. Whatever. Although still a stretch, I can believe all that based on where we're going. But there's just some things that you're just like, what were they going for here? Like I like that mm-hmm. the mom, the kooky. Oh my god, my dog is going bizarre this morning. I don't know what the hell. I don't. Maybe you can't hear it, but. Bear with me one second. I'll be right back. Okay. So yeah, I'll do. I'll do another. Um, I think I did this last time, didn't I? I talked by myself for a minute. Seem, it seems familiar. So, <laughs> oh, I can't wait to tell him when he gets back. And I should have looked it up. Or I'm gonna make a a little bit of a joke about the music <laughs> since he was talking about the music. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's a good one. So, yeah, yeah. I I definitely enjoyed it more than I had before. I knew where it was going to go this time. So that was cool with that, with that knowledge. And, you know, I guess on second thought, I could say, no, it's good. I could say that in a way, I guess I know why they didn't showcase any of that stuff where I said, maybe they can put a, they could have sprinkled one or two things here. I guess they wanted to save it for like an end surprise for that party scene at the end. So I guess you kind of don't want to, show your cards for something that cool. So, you well, know, to give the movie credit, as we were saying that, and I agreed with it, maybe at a dream sequence, because weird things have happened to him. We, they did sprinkle it in. She is in the shower backwards. He screams right. with that girl. Who's all contorted as oh, well. I, I, so they had the, and she was, yeah. Uh, oh. So they did do it, but I'm thinking because they open up with a, a, cle- a, a some kind of a trope with the dreams and whatever. And then, and not only that, but he actually enters the house in the dream at the beginning, the same way for the reality at the end, uh, when he comes into the house, I, I get it. And they, they tied that together nicely because they have that dream aspect to it. They probably could have put in a, a, a wacky dream sequence that was a little bit more explicit and like a flash of something, something that was weirder. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I liked like the, the, the whole incestual thing was really creepy and weird, but I liked the butt head part where his dad's head comes uh-huh. out of the butt. And, yeah. Uh, and then he does the fart noise, which was an added. Yeah. Like that, that's actually funny. It's funny. I could see someone not like, I, I could, she'll carry this movie. She, she would not be into it. I just, there's certain movies I just know. There's just no point. Well, <laughs> so, you, know you know me. It's just not going to be enjo- enjoyed by, by her. And then that will make my enjoyment less. <laughs> <laughs> right no i get you I, I but the thing is it kind of fits in i don't like ridiculous humor but in this situation it makes sense that that could happen it isn't it wasn't the whole third act it was mostly other stuff there wasn't really comedy to be to be had but there is dark humor and why not mess with somebody just because you can if you have that ability to do it so the butthead thing i don't mind like i said if, if that was the, the flavor of the whole movie no i wouldn't have liked it but I think it fits in there. You know, I think I think it's okay to have that there. And just the scenes of the hands going into the skin and then the connecting. Oh, that stuff's cool. Like, it's, it, it's just, like, I really, really dig that aspect of it. And the themes mm-hmm. and, and what we're talking about, about, like, just about the rich always um, eating off or sucking off the port, sucking off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sucking, sucking off, off. the port. It does say suck them off. He goes, just, the rich have always sucked off low class shit like you. They are There's some great, acting. good acting too. The acting is consistent through this for a lower mm-hmm. budget movie. I've always been happy with the acting from all the people. Uh, the the judge that comes down, th- again, nitpicks. These are nitpicks. They they stand him, but he's like he makes reference of a beauty mark, mm-hmm. and then of course then has to readdress it like oh because he sucked him off so much that he ended right. up acquiring the beauty mark. It's good, uh-huh. but it's like like ding 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 ding. Like I mean, they could have just had him go like. 
what's this? Or like they really right. stress on it. And then it's almost like the camera lingers on it a little too much. There's just a yeah. couple of instances like that where I'm like, cut away, in, out, done. It would have still True. worked. You still would have gotten the joke and whatever. Again, I'm nitpicking here because the movie's done. It's what we've got. And now I've got to, we're, we're, we're critiquing what we've actually had. But I'm just saying mm -hmm. from watching it over and over again, those are the things that have always sat with me. And we always talk about these movies that we watched when we were younger. Like Dead Heat was one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. This was another one that I always wanted to see uncut, even though it doesn't really, it's, I think a handful of sequences, like the eyeballs actually coming out when the fingers come out and push the uh. eyes out that, and, and out of the mouth. Like there, there's just some nuances that weren't in the original R rated cut okay. and that I remember seeing stills of and wanting to see them. And so you get them in this. Uh, and so it just kind of helps solidify it. Uh, but, or, sell it i guess is what i'm going but it's it's enjoy it's enjoyable film again i don't think like just like you're talking about how there wasn't much as much to talk about and they live i think this one it has that aspect we've talked about it i don't know what else more we could we could talk about other than saying like you know the the wife or that mother character it's just so fish out of water like i don't know what they were going for there yeah, I don't either. I I I wanted, I was hoping maybe I've missed something all these years that you could enlighten me on, but it, no. it's so bizarre. Other than yeah. them trying to use her as a weapon, get her, Mrs. Whoever, and she's like, ah, hair, hair, <laughs> and she goes to the tag. Like it was funny, it, it worked, uh, but and I liked even though that guy was jerking off his friend in the sense of uh, jo joking around with them, which made no sense. He's a good friend in the sense he comes to his rescue and wants to help and get him out of there. Yes. And it's one of those few movies that there's really no resolution. They literally just escape. Well, that's the problem, too. And drive away. The end. <laughs> the end is a problem. It's a weird escape. That they're going to yeah. obviously tell somebody about it. That doesn't work. The, the it, yeah. This should... This is a movie that should have ended on a down note. And you know I always want them. And I actually like the characters, so maybe not. But the only proper way to truly end this movie is to have it end on a down note. It's, they had suspicions. They were right. They died. If this movie was made in 2022, that is how it would end. They wouldn't yeah. have that escape. They wouldn't feel like they had to throw that escape in. That's one thing about nowadays, which I prefer, that people aren't afraid to have an ending like that. Now, when you just have an ending like that just to have it, I could see some people getting tired of it. But in a movie like this, I think it only makes sense because then what's going to happen? Like, they live. Things happen at the end. They blow it up. It's over. So either the either society is defeated, the rich upper class either either they're defeated or and they can live on or not. But I think they live on. See, I don't think they're course. defeated. I, I think they, they live be. on. Well, they do live on, but I think that that makes it more realistic. But for the story structure of this movie, they should have. I think they should have thought they got away. And then there's like a roadblock or something like that, because they do have just like they live had it. You've got cops that seemingly are on society's side. But right. again, not to take away from anybody, it's a cop because it's a great job. I'm just saying that's not considered like cops are usually like you know, bundled in with teachers in the sense of like you, you're going to work. It's a job. Well, he gets like, mad. You're working. Like, Remember, you're not he part of this elite group. <laughs> but he even says it to him. He goes, yeah, he goes, it must be nice to be rich or something. Remember he tells the kid that because he's oh, yeah. rich because his family. So he was messing with him, but it's like he doesn't care. He knows this is going on, but yeah. maybe he picks on him because they know he's not along for the program because he's adopted because he's alien scum. Yeah. You know, you yeah, know, it's, so it's, it's a, I, which I've again. I've always lived there. I love that. I think this would have been right for a sequel. Why? Yeah, I know. Are, they, are they adopt or just for food? Are they doing it? Raising him and saying, "Well, hopefully he's going to go along with our stuff, but if not, then he's going to he's going to be food for us." No, I guess I that may they, be it. I think they must have killed his family and take adopted the kid. But you're right; there's no real resolution to that aspect too, because they could feed off anybody and pretty much get away with it. Yeah, that's so. Right. Why why go through it? Except I guess it's it's considered a, a delicate test, like or not, uh, uh, not, um like a special treat, like something specific that would bring them joy, like the slugs that they eat or whatever, that they're like, it's a good harvest. This He has been primed and groomed to be like the, the best shunt of the, of the night. You know, they didn't yeah. establish the, they didn't establish like maybe the mythology well enough, which, you know, maybe could be explained in a sequel if they were ever going to do one. And nowadays you can't say there would never be a sequel because it seems like, you know, there are certain movies that have gained a cult following that will, that, that get sequels. I don't know if this will ever be one of them, but it has a following 
a, a, you know, especially when I think the Blu-ray came out and whatever, I think it introduced a lot more people to the film. Yeah. That was so, one of them. Yeah. You know, I somehow didn't know. I, I, I Maybe I saw it. I just didn't. But it got me going. But I, I do have to mention this. <laughs> no, I thought for sure. I thought for sure that this movie that. was Canadian. I looked up and it's not. <laughs> but but the, you mentioned the music, right? And all that stuff. This is yeah. this is the music, the opening stuff. But listen. Yeah. I was going to make a joke to you, but... Yeah. It's a Canadian chorus, totally. I was going to joke. I was going to... As I was watching it, I was thinking of you, and I forgot to put it down as a note. Say, Dave is going to think this movie's Canadian. It's funny that you brought it up. I did. That's awesome. I, <laughs> I looked it up to see, and it's not. Maybe the people that made the music were. I, did, I, I, I didn't dig crazy. deeper. It does sound crazy. like Canadian chorus music to me, though. I was like, oh, yeah, there it is. That, that's the same stuff I, I hear about Canadian commercials. <laughs> anyway. Oh, <man. laughs> Ontario awesome. Place. Yeah, I, I can't help it. That's just where my mind goes. <laughs> Right. How about they use that freaking thing that they use in Day of the Dead? The freaking the zombie wrangler around his neck. Yeah, I love <laughs> That's that. That's great. The zombie yeah. wranglers. Uh, but you know, in, in that chorus and the whole opening credits, they don't show you much, but you, you you get that really bizarre imagery of them being combi- sort of combining and wondering what the fuck. It looks like a bizarre group sexual act which we did of course see full fledged later so they I, oh. I guess to argue against their own point that we brought up again is that they do give you little tastes but I I, yeah. I still agree with you that there should have been I think another zinger but it could have been a, a, a dream sequence call it a cop out but because they have the dreams the dream aspect sprinkled throughout it might have been it, it could have easily fit in where there's a little bit more of a, a visceral yeah. um impact there just to to give you a, a little bit more to latch on to but there's enough here there's definitely mm-hmm. enough here uh just those bizarre little nitpicks we picked and i just kind of wish uh that we pointed out i should say that i just wish that maybe the music the actual soundtrack other than the society chorus uh right. <laughs> was was a little bit different it just seemed a little generic yeah oh for sure for sure man it's how about what's her name though freaking clarissa oh my god freaking yeah Beautiful, Devin DeVasquez. Man, I love you know he doesn't even hide is... it from his girlfriend either. Like he just totally is oh, like, yeah, sorry. I would, I would, I couldn't help it if I were him either. There's, oh my gosh, but I mean, she was, she was playmate of the month in June 1985. So by the time this is, this is 1989. So she's, you know, I don't know how old she was. She was born in 63, 70, 83. So she's 26 here. So. Playing a, a high schooler, I suppose. Oh, but they mostly do. Yeah, they all they all do that. Mama like Billy Mia. Was he? Was, this guy was his cl- big claim to fame. He he's been in a ton of stuff. I think it was some soap operas and, and Baywatch. Um, the main guy. Oh, Billy Warlock. Yeah, That's he was. Wild yeah, with Billy Warlock. Days of Our Lives. He was in Halloween too. Craig. Huh. I know. I, I saw that credit as well. I was like, who the fuck is Craig? He must be one of the boys that walk up and say, he was wearing that damn mask or whatever. When oh, they're talking about we're looking for Bennett Tramer. Yeah. <laughs> he might have been him. It just whatever. might have been. Well, he was in Baywatch Nights. Can't forget that classic. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Baywatch but, Nights. Silk Stockings. Remember that cheap thrill freaking show? That, uh, maybe you don't, but no, it, used to come on, it used to come on after wrestling on USA Network. Silk Stockings. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So, yeah, good stuff well, though. I like what they're going for, and 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 crazy, uh, crazy third act, which is kind of hot at the same time, even though it's bad. But the the, the effects are freaking awesome. Oh, the thing with the hand is fucking great. Oh, yeah. dude, just yeah. The so turning of, cool. the turning inside out is is oh, great as well too. That's a problem like, too. See again, that's a, it's just the, that easy. Did you, yeah, I know. It's just that all you gotta do is shove your hand up someone's ass and freaking. I thought you were gonna get mad where he he punches them and they stop kissing. He's like, he's got those yeah, that's, lips. I, I, thought you, I thought that would be right up your no Dave zone. <laughs> like Dave a bridge Dave. too far. It really yeah, was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was no call for that. I, you're right though. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, ah, why? What is this fucking goofy? It might be yeah. something you'd see in um. I don't know, a freaking Bugs Bunny cartoon. I don't know, it was just a little, I would, little too much. I would say that when I, back when I first saw this and it first came out, I'd, I'd say that I was probably a 9 out of 10. Uh, I would say now I'm 7.5 out of 10. Wow. I, yeah, 
I'm I'm like, eight point five. I really oh, well, the hell out okay, of it. You're you're higher than I am. Yeah, I it's a it's really good. I like it. I just think it's it. There's I don't know. It hasn't aged as well as Bride of Reanimator for me. I know you're not the biggest Bride of Reanimator fan, but no, uh, it's okay. Yeah, you, that's exactly it. I think you just think it's okay. Yeah. Uh, but I I really I really dig that as a sequel. Um, but he was on like he was cut on a roll at the time. But for me, uh. I even liked at the time, I haven't revisited it in fucking years. I even liked Silent Night, Deadly Night for the initiation. I've never seen it. I've never seen yeah, anything. That was a, too. a Brian Jasna film as well. Oh, oh, no shit. Wow. Maybe I should watch it if that's the case. I was a fan of his. I told you. I even recognized yeah. him when we were, I was at that Fantasia Fest. And I, I believe it was the dentist that was being released. To, the dentist or the dentist too. One of the, one of the two. I think right. it was the first one. And it, the film never got across the border. So, 96. Yeah, so we watched John Carpenter's Vampires instead. So whenever oh. Vampires came out, because that was what that was the that's what would ended up. I had already seen it because I went to the festival to see that, but I also wanted to see it was Phantasm Four I saw, and I was also the Dentist was supposed to be. It the other sounds one. like 1990 then Phantasm Four in in um no, Vampires. Much, yeah, it was uh, it was later. Two thousand. Did I say ninety? I mean, yeah. Two thousand. I'm combining I meant to say. too many. Different things. It was street. No, because I it might be two different times, man. Because there was also street trash. Okay. Came. So there's because I at these really cool screenings I saw the street trash, um, uh, director's cut. Uh, I saw uh, vampires. Ninety eight. And Phantasm four. And at one point it was the dentist was supposed to be the other one didn't come, so they just did another screen of vampires. They all came out in ninety eight. Phantasm four, vampires, and Dennis two. Those three came out in 98. Dennis 2. So it was the Dennis 2 that would have yep. been the one that he was promoted and never came around. Brace yourself or whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it, but I should because I kind of, I like the first one. So. so. So, yeah. So now this next movie. What the yeah. fuck? Let me tell you this. This is this. The story is this. Oh, can I, inter- let me introduce it because I always find that we do this. I do it okay. all the time. So let me, let me cut you off. Do it. Because I'm good at that. And I'm going to, I'm going to introduce it. And then you tell me the story. Uh, okay. So Santa Sangre. I hope I said that right. Uh, 1989, of course. A former circus artist escapes from a mental hospital to rejoin his armless mother, the leader of a strange religious cult, and is forced to enact brutal murders in her name as he becomes her arms. Mm, indeed. Well, Okay. So I've never seen this movie. I have to watch it for the summer series because it's one of the made one of the movies that made the last cut for next year's huge big end to the freaking whole thing where we have to rank 150 movies. So I can't rank a movie I haven't seen. So I knew I had to see this and this one passed through. It's one of the, the it was voted in as one of the top three movies in 1989. So I'm like, I know I got to watch this movie. When we put this stuff together, I said, I'll put this on the list. Maybe it'll come in that I can kill two birds at one stone. <laughs> and maybe I won't have to watch Pet Cemetery again because I've seen it a lot. I want to see something new for once. And I tell you what, after an hour of watching this movie, I was like, I wish I just would have watched Comfortable Pet Cemetery. Because this, what a fucking slog. I, I'll tell you what. It's funny. It, it looks good. I, I can't, I, it looks great. Yes. He loves this director. This is Possession esque for me it's like this in the sense of like i like this better though trust me i'm not a fan of possession as you will know but i'll let you say but this director loves himself (laughs) does he well i all i know is i want to watch possession again i will never watch this movie again i have no desire there was on top of it being a slog the problem is this you could have cut 40 minutes from this movie i don't want to watch fucking circus acts there's a two hour and three minute movie. I'm not going to watch a movie, a horror movie about a cool idea for sure, where you see the intro and the way it goes. I don't need to see extended fucking circus acts throughout the whole thing in, in, in presentations yeah. like this. I don't need it. If you could have cut that stuff out, I the, everything else could have been tolerable, but it was such a slog. This is a movie. Again, I had no problem with long movies. I love Midsommar. I want to watch the, just the extended uh, freaking Dr. Sleep, just the extended. You like Deer Hunter? The reason I'm asking I saw it once Hunter. and I liked it this past year. I, I like it. I like it. 
But second half talk about being at someone's fucking wedding, you feel like you're there in real time for that sequence. I, I, I feel like this is what they're trying to do is just get, put you in to this environment. So I don't just I can't disagree with you on the sense that I I, I, I you feel the length here. Um, <laughs> just like you feel the length you know, like freaking point, Lexington you, Steel's freaking length. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You feel the length here. But yeah. I kind of respect like I, I I'm not. I liked some of that aspect, but I can't disagree with you that you're just like, okay, let's get on with it. Yes. Get on with it. But I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm higher than you on this, but I don't love this movie. I do not love this movie. I don't hail it as a masterpiece like very a lot of people do, but I like it. I like it. There's enough good stuff here. Um, fuck, I thought that that, fe- that female wrestler that looks like a guy, I thought that was that Nicole Bass all these years. <laughs> I thought it was Nicole Bass. <laughs> what the hell, really? Even when she came back on screen, I'm like, that's Nicole Bass, right? I look it up. Nope. No. I don't she know wasn't where around where yet. Or how I figured out that that was Nicole, or thought it was Nicole Bass. I don't think she was around in 89 yet. I could be. I don't know. I didn't know about her until like the anyway. 90s. That poor girl. But I mean, yeah. what the? F- I, okay. Sorry. By the time we get to the wrestling stuff, the last 30 minutes of this movie, I'm 100% checked out. It's on my screen. I'm sorry, people that voted for it. I always give my all for every review so I can say things. But after an hour and a half of it, when I got to the last hour, half hour, I was just there and I was just hitting fast forward until I saw dialogue. And I just and all the wrestlers come in, the lucha libres and all yeah. that, which and all that by the t- by the time it got to that point of the movie, I'm like, no, just give me back to the religious shit. Let me get to the freaking, I. And there was, I have too many pro, like possession. I want to see again. There was enough there for me. This movie here, not only, and I'll say this sometimes, it's arts for art's sake. It's artsy for art's sake. I love artsy movies. I love, okay. I mean, I'm gonna sit here and talk about freaking, you know, the house that Jack built. And I love how fucking long that movie is. And there's there's dialogue in it. And and, and give me Lars von Trier. I'll watch Nymphomaniac volume one and two. They're like seven hours total. Two fucking movies. I do not have a problem with an artsy movie <laughs> that's long, but I need substance. I need something, and this is one of those situations that for me, it just didn't work. The beginning was fine. Some of the stuff was fine, but here's a question. Okay, so... Why would they have a rope that he can easily <laughs> hightail it out of the fucking uh, uh, mental institution? By <laughs> okay, well, that that's one thing. And what about him? They were playing him off like, okay, in the beginning he seems normal. Then What's all of the a sudden, okay, analogy? they're going the the huh the bird. Well, well, they just they 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 have him like kind of like he's in a cage, or, or, or almost like that. And then he's like he's able like they actually do a, a dissolve from him to an eagle, and the eagle or I think it's an eagle is what ends up coming up and and coming into us being reintroduced back to the. Um, the circus. And I think that's when it goes into flashback. I, I'm confusing it too because I watched this a, a week ago because I knew I was going away for work and I didn't know if I was going to have a chance to. So I might be blending stuff. But they just seem to be doing, like you're saying, art for art's sake. I know that there's a meaning here that you can deep dive into, but sometimes I feel like some stuff is like spaghetti against the wall. You say, look, let's, let's see what I can do and what will stick and what will people will try to pull out of that I don't know necessarily if it's all there. Like part of it, part of me where, where I was going with this is like the story itself is essentially psycho. Really at the end of the day, it's essentially psycho being told, in a way. Being told in yeah. a different in a weird way. Uh, I mean, he, you know, he goes to a mental institution here as opposed to just living his life, but he escapes to come back to be his mom's arms, but his mom's dead. But no, wait, I'm so fucking lost. Okay. Hold on now. So this is what I see. Everything happens in the beginning. They destroy the church, whatever. I don't know why she worships this thing and everything. I don't I get it. Whatever. That's fine. I'm at the, the end of the world. This is paint. That old scene. Whatever. I, I'm in. A, I'm on board for all this shit. And the kid seems normal. He just loves his mother. Now, it, it seems that she dies. I don't know. The movie cuts. We see him. All of a sudden, he turns into Tommy Jarvis from part five. It's like he's Tommy Jarvis from... Not like part four, right? A, a normal little kid, <laughs> right? Then, then he's Tommy Jarvis from part five, where he doesn't talk and he's walking he's been around. Been out the sun too long. <laughs> yeah, 
Well, that's what he acts like. Yeah, then why all of a sudden? The sun to look. <laughs> but how the fuck does he go from that to Tommy Jarvis? And then out of nowhere, he's this mastermind behind this fucking show with his mother. He reunites with his mother, and finally he's a clear thinker, and he has the the freaking bravado to pick up that chick that he freaking loved that he loved when he was a kid and everything else. How does he? How is he normal? And then fucked up, and then all of a sudden, so fucked up he can't even function in society. And then he's completely normal and freaking again. At the I don't end. think he None is. I think that's sense. the problem. I don't think he is. And well, he can talk. Uh, well, he, but I he's, think he's plotting is, shit. I think right? the movie presents itself in a in a very bizarre way that when at the end, when it's kind of revealed, and maybe I've got it wrong, but as a kid, I mean, let's face it, as a kid, he gets his. The guy that is, I don't think, whether it's his father or whether it's just the guy that's overseen him, as he tattoos this damn kid uh, with a knife. To make him a man. He's living, making him a man. He's living in this fucked up world. He's seen his mother getting hurt because this guy's always trying to fuck the girl that he's, that gets turned on by by the knives or whatever. Oh, all that stuff. I can, hook, line, and sinkers. That's the good stuff to me. Wait, who, why do they, why would they want to fuck this guy? That fucking that that person. Uh, you take a look at that he's guy. He's the ringleader. I guess he's the ringleader. Okay. I, I, I get it. Okay, so it's everybody wants Mexico. to fuck him. <laughs> it, it makes no sense that everybody wants to fuck him. And then on top of it, the one girl gets mad at, at, at the tattooed lady. She comes out and she grabs a knife and she goes, "His wife is a good woman. Who the fuck is his wife?" We never even see anything about his wife after that. I thought that she was standing up for maybe a friend, and then she turns around and she fucks him. I have no fucking idea what's happening in this movie. She's the, I thought she's the wife. I took it as no. she's the wife. But anyway, anyway, no. like so. Anyway, uh, then so he's in a fucked up environment, and we're we're seeing this. But then I guess out of her jealous rage and the fact that she tries to kill uh, him, he slices both of her arms off. But she dies from that, is how I take it. But we don't oh. know that because the movie presents itself from him being institutionalized, coming back, and. He's envisioning that he's his arms, but his mom's been dead all this time. Wait a minute. So there's no show? Everybody goes and sees her on the stage, and he's doing the arm, it's which him. is ridiculous. It's just him. What? Yeah. It's just him in that puppeteering thing. Get the fuck out of here. You're telling me this mother doesn't exist now in the second half of the movie. It's that's, all about it. That's, that's how I took it. Now, if you told me way well, back when. Who go when, see that show? If you told me, if you told me way back when, well, because he's, he's fucked up in his head. Like, even at the end, he thinks... I think he thinks this is a good show, but it's not. And it's a really bizarre thing. That's why at the end when he thinks he's with his mom or whatever like that, it's just him. And he's just got the, the, the it's, it's his hands and they're all uh, nail polished up and everything else. And it just realizes that it's just been him. He's been doing it in his mind. He thinks he's doing this and, and avenging her death uh, or whatever it may be, or carrying it on. Now that's how I interpreted it. And, and I, I, I if you asked me before I rewatched this, based on what I remembered seeing way back when, I would have taken it for more face value and said, oh, no, he comes back. Somehow his mom survived this. She's armless. And so right. he comes back and help, helps her. And, and That's what I thought. revenge in, in her eyes. That's how I would have remembered it. But see it here at the very end, I think they clearly show that there's no mom. I was lost it's by It's just then. him. At the very oh, well, end. So that's the problem. Like the, the revelation, watch the last five minutes again, and the revelation would be that it's just him. Okay, then why do they sell tickets that's to that show? That's why it's psycho. It's essentially psycho retold. Like, mom's dead. Yeah, but they sell tickets to the show. And he's up like her. They sell tickets and they say, like... this is a woman. They say, no, the name, of it, it's called Woman with Wavy Arms. Or if if this was a terrible fucking show with just some guy on stage doing this, who would want to go see that? They're selling it like it's a cool gimmick. If you look on the outside, it's advertised. And I forgot what they say the act is called. It's our newest act. It's Woman with what, I forgot what they said. And then you go see the show and it's a packed audience and you see what's going on. And he's and then as I'm watching it, I'm like, well, we keep seeing the guy it, behind the girl. This is not a good fucking I don't show to tell you, Dave. I, I, you're right. You're right. If you like, but they, yeah, I guess this is my joke. It's is too metaphorical. Game. See, that's the problem. Yeah. Movies like this. Possession I can't, wasn't. Yeah, but possession, I believe there's a story in the fucking thing. And it's the only good thing about this movie. Okay. Not the only good thing. The technical aspects are fine. It looks good. It sounds good. It's shot. Well, yes, the kills are worth waiting for. They're fucking great. Bloody kills. I love that, but that's it. Everything else. You could just fucking throw it out. Possession to me, and again, I've only seen it once. I got enough out of Possession that I'm intrigued and I want to peel the layers back and go back and figure it out. This movie, 
Even if I could figure it out, it's not worth sitting through fucking 40 minutes of circus acts. But that's just well, me, though. Okay. You would probably not like the rest of his filmography then. So I, I, I always fuck up this guy's name. I think this is, doesn't Madonna have a song, Alejandro, uh, or something like that? I think that's how you say his first name. Uh, Jer- Jer- Jerosky. Jerosky. Yeah, Jodorowsky. okay, thank you. I fucked his name. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, there you go. I, for whatever reason, I have a problem. I knew that name. Anyway, so if, if you've seen Holy Mountain, it's just as fuck. If you've Can seen you? El Topo, it's like, so he, he's got a knack. Not- for, for for doing this, um, which is not usually my go-to for film. Yeah. So a lot the of lobster? people like, is that him? Uh, no, the lobsters. No, no, he. he that's wow. so, something totally different because that's the guy that did um, um, uh, the sacred deer, killing of a sacred deer. Is it really? Okay. What deer. about uh, Ken Russell? So, what are, what movies did he make? It's a similar type thing. Ken Russell did. Uh, um, Devils. I can't remember what else he did. Either way, uh, that stuff isn't, I don't think, for me either. But I don't know. I, I should give it a fair chance. But I saw Lair of the White Worm, and I was just kind of like, okay, but. Kind of like I feel about some of the things here. That, Lair of the White Worm. Sorry, yeah, it was like that too. But I, so he, I I actually think this might be his most mainstream one. I haven't seen his whole filmography. But just from the ones I, I've seen, Holy Mountain, I remember liking it, but not loving it. Because, again, it's, it's a lot of that uh, analogy, uh, you know, analogy type style of filmmaking, which I like it when it's mixed in with more of a, I guess, mainstream style of film uh, storytelling, as opposed to it all being an analogy, which is why I don't like possession because they're, yeah, okay. I get it. They're, I think that's just really more um, on, on, a, on a next level that I just don't have the patience or the attention span to dissect. I, okay. I like it. It's a mix like Videodrome style. I like that where you can sort of pull things out of, but to me, it's still an entertaining piece that can be viewed more straightforwardly as well. So okay. I like that where it, it, you could just view it, pop it on, but then you also have the ability to deep dive and pull a little bit out of. Um, I think he borderlines here. I think he wants to be the one that's a deep dive, that it, that's more uh, uh, allegory, whatever it may be. Uh, and I think it's there, but I think he is the type of director that thinks so highly of himself <laughs> that hmm. then at the other time you're not fully invested. So obviously he's not doing something totally right because you like that style or a little, a little bit more tolerant of it. And you did not feel like there's anything or enough of it here. Like, you know, you could draw conclusions about the bleeding elephant uh, dying and everything else. And then and, and it and, sucked. And, uh, connected to him. Um, so uh, either way, but there's, that, no. yeah. That scene sucked. It was sad to see and everything else. I don't know how they did it and everything. I don't know. If it really was another a tragedy elephant. for him as a kid. Well, well, you saw. Did you see everybody fade away? So, if, like, whether the show was even a show, Dave, I don't even think it was. I think it was all in his mind. I think he came back and maybe he tried to perform in front of people. And people just thought this guy was a crazy kook because everybody disappears. Like, literally, like the old. What at the end you're saying? Yeah, everybody okay. fades away. I was so uninvested by that time. I, I just wanted the fucking yeah. credits to roll. I just it's fast the little and... the little person guy, his buddy that he kisses. He looks like Andre the Giant. It's crazy. He's a little guy who looks like the biggest guy who's ever been. His face looks just like Andre the Giant. It was fucking. It's the weirdest fucking thing. But anyway, <laughs> um, so what what about that elephant scene? That doesn't make any sense. So they an elephant dies. Okay, so they're gonna spend the money to make that fucking big thing. That big fucking wooden thing, which looks like it's expensive, just to dump him in a fucking pit? The fuck is that? Why would you do that? And why would you put an elephant in a pit? You know how bad that, that place is gonna stink. I, again, I don't know. I don't know. I think the elephant is 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 a symbol of something majestic. But I, again, I'm spitballing here. I, I I'm sure you know Tyler. Maybe if Tyler was on the show or Johnny New Pants, they will they will spin a whole web. Uh, you know, Sam, uh, Sam Edwards, is that his name? Sam, Sam. Yeah. There's Sam. From yeah. yeah. They, they love, they, they pulled things. They'll probably pull way more out of this than, than we can. And maybe we're not, we're, we're not doing the, the film, uh, enough justice, but I'd have to research. So I, I don't normally like to research too much. I want to see the film and what can I pull out of it? Like you, like you. And I think I, I got a little bit more out of it than you did. Yeah. I think they wanted to give this, this sort of like a, a proper, funeral burial but the downfall is that you're in this 
deserty kind of area and so they drop them and then of course you got all these fucking locals who are starving and now we're waiting for this so that they can tear it apart and have it for meat for the family and to survive and whatever it's yeah, just I guess cycle of life it's just kind of sad it, 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 the whole thing's traumatic and i think that's just leads to him growing up in this environment but i think when he comes back i don't think he's actually coming back to a circus i think we're shown that but i think that's all in his mind well that helps a little it almost almost makes you want to if i could find a way to get a cut like like they have the fucking cuts for uh <laughs> cannibal holocaust with animal cruelty removed circus removed Give me, I don't want I don't any performance. I don't think they really killed an elephant. I mean, I could be wrong. I, I think the police note, I think there's even, uh, like you'll see that it's bleeding in one shot, not in the other shot. Okay. I think it's a, a, an effect. But they 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 tie it, they directly link it uh, again, like. Uh, it's a metaphor. Like, me- metaphorically. Which is whatever fine. It is with him with his nose bleeding at the end and whatever. And I guess yeah. just. It, it, again, there's, there is. There is stuff to like here. I think this is a film that I've watched, but I'm not going to disagree with you that say it's not a little bit of a challenge because you're put into this lifestyle. So it's like you're you're there for two, like, well, not all two hours, but you're in this circus lifestyle. And like, there are stuff that you're just like, what am I watching? Why am I watching it here? Now, some of it, I think it's to put you into this mindset and to, and to just set a, a stage, if you will. Yeah, uh, I guess for- so scene but i could see not not enjoying it i didn't have a problem with it uh as much i don't love the movie i will i watch it again possibly but i'm not rushing out to it it's not something but most of these type movies again i that are maybe a little bit more challenging that you have to draw a little bit more from are usually not something that i'll just put on or rush back to, but I enjoy this one a little bit more so than a lot of the ones that we've discussed here. And again, I bring up, I keep bringing up possession. Yeah, that one just irks me. It just rubs me the wrong way. I don't know why. It just does. That's okay. I mean, would you would you this watch one, it one time? Possession, I've watched, I think twice. Okay, I've I watched it once. Once for the show, but I think it was twice. I think I tried to watch like whatever cut existed way back in the day. But I I could be wrong on that. I've been wrong on the show before. Even like uh, when I talk about sometimes when I talk about Dario Gento, I confuse some of his earlier works. And I'm like, you know, Four Flies on Gray Velvet. I th- I thought I I'd, I'd seen it and and whatever. No, it it was it was um, Cat O' Nine Tales or or whatever it may be. So like I've done it. I've it's not above me to have confused things that from back in the day. Some things I've got that clear, no questions asked. Oh, I watched it like. And, or revisited it numerous times, or I hated it. And right. So possessions, like, I just know I don't like it now. That's fair. I, I mean, but this see, that's I how it is. To grab you and I. To. Yeah. You and I like artsy horror movies, but not all of them. We, we don't have a problem with them. Some people can't tolerate anything. We like them, but we have to have something to grab onto with it. And yes. I don't have anything to grab onto here, really. And I guess that's how you feel with possession. But I hate to come off that way because I know how it sounds. Like when I listen to a podcast, if I'm really into a movie, you know what I yeah, mean? Like the and it's, it, it's an RT movie. Well, no, like a movie where oh. someone's going to watch and say, make those critiques. Oh, it's pretentious. This and that. It looks like a, a, a student film. This and that. Uh, the message. Of and they complain. And I happen to love this fucking artsy horror movie. And I listen to it. I'm like, oh, these guys. And they, it just they kind of aggravate me. I don't want to aggravate people that are fans of this movie. But – at least I try. I, 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 when I sat down, I was excited. I was like, okay, hey, this is a movie, you know, based on everything I heard. But it just didn't do it. There was just too much of that it's shot. It's shot well, shit. though. It's shot beautifully. I know it is. It's I know. That's just it, it looks good. It looks yeah. good. I thought the, the performances, for the most part, were great. I uh, The gore is great, except for one scene where it's the guy getting stabbed, and you could see the blood shooting off the knife. I it, saw that. Quick, I'm like, why did they put that in? Because they're, I know. It, it gets just it as so gory. Cool. Two yes. seconds later, yeah, he gets, he gets. I'm like, they could have easily left that one out, yeah. and it still had the same impact. But that, so that was it. I mean, but for the most part, it, when it's bloody, it's bloody. Uh, the arms getting cut off, yeah, it's like one, one fell swoop, <laughs> and your arms just go <laughs> boo. But the way they shoot it from above, and you see the blood shooting out, I thought was really, was really great. But I believe 
what we're supposed to get from it, even though they don't tell it to you matter of factly, is she succumbed to, to that, which makes total sense because both of her arms were uh, sliced well, you know off what? and she's just left it to bleed out. And then, but then he comes back and they tell the story. And again, it's allegory or, or they, again, it's all in his mind, whatever, metaphorical, whatever you may take, you take it from it. But there, I think he's killing the remnants of what still exists from his past to put it to rest. You know, this is what they should have done. When he was imprisoned, when he was in the uh, asylum or what, what have you, wherever he is, he should have like seen his mother while he was in there a couple times. So we as the viewer realize that this is just a vision. Again, like Tommy Jarvis seeing fucking Jason a couple times. <laughs> I, Tommy I get Jarvis, it, but I think like, he wanted to tell you. I didn't think he wanted to tell you so straightforwardly. So I think... Like, as you're going on, yeah. you're like, what the fuck? The woman's still alive? Like, when you're first seen. That's what I thought. They stitched I, her up I, and they saved her. I don't know. That was it. But then at the end, it all, like, at the end, I guess you you really did tune out. Because at the if you just go back and watch the last five minutes, you'll be like, you did go back? Or you tuned no, out? No, I'm saying, I really tuned out. I admitted it. I felt yeah, yeah. bad because I said it. I, for the listeners and the people that voted for I felt shitty doing it. But I really was at that point. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to pull oh, anything out of here except negativity. I don't want to just bitch for fucking 30 minutes. So I'm just going to basically say I don't have a lot to say. This is why I don't like it. And maybe offer one or two critiques like I did. I just didn't want to come in here and bury it completely fucking beginning to end. Because it doesn't deserve that. It's just not my cup of tea because I couldn't grab onto what they were trying to say. That's Watch the, the, the last five minutes might shoot it up a half a point for you. Wherever you mm -hmm. are. Maybe a full point wherever you are. Um, because that might explain it still doesn't help you get through the first 45 minutes to an hour of, of, of circus and whatever. But I think it would at least help explain what you witnessed in the second half of the movie a little bit more. So, um, okay. and, uh, assuming I've got it right. <laughs> I normally, normally I'm maybe not always the one that has it correct on this show. And you know, a Brandon, a Brandon, uh, on this episode would have been great too, but I I think yeah. I have it. I think I understood what was presented to us because I I think they kind of straightforwardly show you it at the end in that last little that last little bit. But again, because the movie plays out the way it does and throughout the whole thing, maybe I'm I am missing some crucial aspects to it as well, but, uh, but that's okay. Um, I would go back and visit this again, but I'm not rushing out to it for me. It's a seven out of 10. It's good. I've invested enough that I, I was intrigued and I didn't mind some of the circus thing, but yes, you have to succumb to the fact that you're going to be there watching this for a good hour. And I can see people, if they're in a theater walking out going, what am I watching here? Or just turning it off before they even get far enough in to get to the, the meat and potatoes. <laughs> well, I like, I like to be a patient viewer. Like I said, I don't like when people are impatient. Yeah. It's like I was saying about Halloween ends. So I, I like to, I do consider myself a patient viewer most, almost all the time. But sometimes when I'm, when after an hour and 15 of a movie, I know nothing's going to change significantly. That's going to put me in that place. And that's when I can start hitting the, the fast forward and, and the, and, you know, in the 1.5 and all that. And that's what I'll do. But, only in instances like that doesn't happen much. No, I don't hate it at all. It's a six out of ten. I I, I have to still yeah. give it credit for being well made and having and it's fine. Like I, I'd never be that type of you know. Well, you guy didn't that's think it should have been you. picked at the top three of the year for your summer series. Obviously, you can't see that based on that review no, or based I on can't. that. And but, and I think maybe you'll be a seven if you went to revisit that ending. Maybe you'll be higher. How oh, fuck I don't know. But again. It doesn't necessarily take away from your experience of getting there. So you, you've got to figure that into it too. But I think that last five, just go back and rewatch that. And I think that would at least you're not investing your, your in, in two hours and three minutes again. Uh, I can't yeah. remember the initial cut. This was, if I'm not mistaken, again, no research. This is going by total memory. I believe there's three versions of this movie. I could be wrong. There might be one less or one more. Uh, that I think there was an R-rated version an NC-17 version, and then maybe a director's cut or something else. I hmm. could be wrong. And I, I I can't remember which one I saw initially. Um, that part, well, maybe that will be a cliffhanger, and we'll get back to you on the, on the show there. But I know that there was at least two versions. But, I mean, we could say that about a lot of movies. Society oh, was yeah. another one. Had two. But I thought there was a third sure. cut. So maybe you needed what? the R-rated cut or something. I don't know. 
<laughs> Maybe. Maybe the whole circus know. cut. That's for sure. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Like they have the the animal freaking cruelty removed from from Holocaust. Yeah. How about a freaking the you know the the circus the wolf, list freaking the, the, the wolf. The, yeah, the circus funeral free. You didn't want to see the elephant. No, I don't care about yeah. the elephant. I just don't. I I no no no. The elephant was fine as long as it wasn't real. That's fine. I don't want to see fucking circus acts for 30 minutes of the movie. Just don't want to see a tightrope walker and this and that and the other. If I want to see that, I'll go to the fucking circus. I'll go. Vi- I'll, I'll be. I'll pal around with Christian at work for a week. If I really <laughs> want her to fuck. Maybe that's why it resonated so well with me. It's like uh, <laughs> work life. Yeah, maybe that's why you like. You don't mind. You don't mind that guy. That had. That, that's that's your aspirations to be the head of that circus. I'd love to be the knife thrower. I just loved how turned on she got. I, I just it was thought hot. that was a cool way. Yeah, she was hot. It, yeah, it was a cool way. Yeah, though the there's there's great stuff here. Um, but again, the experience is long, so I, I, Mm -hmm. I, it's not a movie I'd rush out to, to revisit. And again, I know there's a lot of people that say, oh, I, I've watched this maybe once or twice, still 10 out of 10 or whatever. I, I could see that and that's fine. So be it for you. But I just like, for me overall, I think it's good. Not great. That's fair. The the theme is tonight, but I mean, that's okay. Yeah, I can dig it. Well, next next week will not be 80s. This is 89. That's the end of that. Next week's going to be a Halloween so, show of some sorts. I don't know what we're going to do. What are we going to talk about? Any, one of the new movies? A couple of them? Are we going to put up a poll for old movies? What are we going to do? We're uh, we're definitely making our attempts for, speaking of cliffhangers, to have B come here mm. and, and let us know what's going on one way or the other. So is that going to happen? Way. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get you, Hopefully. Get you, get you. <laughs> Even if he comes on for a brief segment or something, or we would like to have him here. Um, I want to set this up almost like a, what do you call it? Remember one like LeBron James, he had to make that big decision if he was going to yeah. uh, go to Miami or, or, yeah. or stay in Cleveland and all that. We're going to have a couple of little kids asking him, are you going to leave <laughs> us? Like so-and-so left us. No, no, I'm sticking around. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Out the back door. You went. <laughs> yep. That's what we're going to have. We're going to have B here, right? We'll have people writing them in. What are you going to do, yeah. B? Oh, I'm staying. <laughs> yeah. So Stay. we're going to try. No promises. We're having little discussions with them, but, um, you know, we're, we're, this is episode 189, 190. We're going to see 191. We're definitely going to have an answer as towards the future of the show, I, at least the direction that it's going to go. And of course we may, we may, you know, have you guys help us out with uh, some decisions if and when it comes to that, but we'll get there either way. It's still October. Have some fun. You know, what else can you do? But yeah. Who do you think? Thanks buddy? everybody. Yeah. Let's get the fuck out of Dodge. Yeah. Let's get out. All right. Um, much love, peace and, uh, Manchichi Manchichi. <laughs> we'll see ya. <laughs>